Hello and welcome back to Dash 28 Live. I am your host, Mike Atkins, and today we will be bringing you another uh, one of the top table matches from the Call to Arms Universal Battle Kings of War tournament for round six. Uh, I believe you guys are currently playing on table eight, uh, and the scenario for this round is Salt the Earth, and we have Chris DeGro. DeGro? DeGro? How do you pronounce your name? DeGro. DeGro, cool. Uh, and Thomas Alexanderson uh, playing uh, Empire of Dust and Twilight Kin. And joining me here in the broadcast booth, uh, we have Michael Piercy, Ashley Smashley Moat, and Alex Coos. Thanks, guys, for joining me here. Uh, and without further ado, let's jump in and take a look at the lists. All right, starting first with uh, Chris's Empire of Dust. Chris, could you walk us through your list, please? Sure, just uh, three units of uh, thick chaff, uh, troops of Revenant Cavalry, a couple of regiments of Revenant Cav, uh, two units of enslaved guardians, one with Brutal, one with Wild Charge 1, uh, the Monolith, the Soul Snare, uh, two Cursed High Priests with Surge and Drain Life 7, one has the Conjurer Staff, uh, Revenant King on Flying Worm with uh, Iron Resolve, and then the Idol of Shobik. Nice. Since all there. And now, Thomas, could you uh, walk us through your Twilight Kin, please? Yep. I got some uh, Impalers, Toll Spares, Archers. So there's uh, a lot of Elves in the start. Gargoyles, then uh, Double Horseman, an Assassin. Uh, and let's get down to the Crone, Standard Bearer, Mikael. Again, a lot of diverse Elves. And the Forces of Nature element as allies. So I can just say a few things about this list. So I was looking to find a new list, old Mantic Army list to build for a third edition. I had one uh, Twilight Kin Army box, so that's why there's a lot of elves. Also, when I played at a Norwegian uh, championship, I played against a guy named Trolls, and he had Forest Chamblers and Tree Herders, and he just marched up at, again on the table in the scout, and I was like, oh, that's cool. I want that as my list as well. So here we are. All right. Very cool. All right, so let's take a look at your universal battle room that you guys have set up. Okay, so we're playing Salt the Earth, uh, and that makes use of seven objective markers. And it looks like you guys have used these little red uh, dots as the objectives, right? Yes. Cool. Um, and talk to me a little bit about the terrain you guys are using. This is one of the epic dwarf maps. Yeah, it's yep. an epic dwarf map. Uh, we just rolled for one at random. Okay. Uh, and are you playing with any weird terrain heights, or are you sticking to the pretty standard uh, everything's too tall to be seen over hills or height three kind of? Yeah, yeah, standard. Okay, great. Uh, then let's uh, go through your deployments then real quick. If we could start uh, with Chris, uh, who's up on the top side of the table. If you could walk us through uh, your units from left to right, please. Sure, so left to right, we start with the Revenant King on the Flying Worm, a unit of reg uh, Revenant Cavalry uh, Regiment, then a troop, Revenant Cavalry, and behind that, we've got the Priest with the Conjurer Staff, then the Idol of Shobik to their right, and the Soul Snare. And moving to the middle, those are the uh, Guardians of Wild Charge 1. Uh, behind them is the Monolith. Uh, then there's another troop of Revenant Cavalry. And then behind them, uh, the Enslaved Guardians of Brutal. And then moving farther over, we've got another troop of Revenant Cavalry, the other priest without the Conjurer Staff, and then finally a regiment of Revenant Cavalry. All right, great. Uh, and then Thomas, if you could uh, walk us through your deployment, please. Uh, I have two regiments of Abyssal Horsemen, uh, some uh, Forest Shamblers. Okay, I can and the tree herder, assassin and Pegasus hiding behind the forest shamblers, uh, Mikael, impalers, uh, spearman horde, crone behind them, 
uh, army standard better on the right, then uh, some archers just towing into the woods, and some gargoyles on the far left flank. All right, great. Uh, okay, and I believe, uh, Thomas, you have some scout moves to do still? Yeah, cool. I have not done them yet. Awesome. All right, uh, so thanks so much for walking us through that, guys. Best of luck to both of you. Uh, we'll be watching. Uh, have fun, and uh, we will see you back here when you're when you're done with your game. Okay, Thank sounds you. good. Thanks. Good luck, guys. Good luck. <clears throat> okay. Sometimes I love when you say we'll be watching, and it feels very big brothery. <laughs> Creepy. That's Michael what I'm going for here. Creepy. Always watching. Right. He sees. He sees uh, everything. So, I'm a little puzzled by the deployments here because we can see how they they laid out their tokens for this scenario, right? They basically made a big H, um, which means both of them dropped tokens in both deployment zones. Um, or I guess more than likely, like they each put two tokens in a deployment zone and then one in the middle. Um, so they're clearly both planning on like holding the line to some extent and camping on those two deployment zone tokens. Um, but uh, Chris hasn't really left any units to sit on the two in his deployment zone, and he no. doesn't... I don't know that he's got anything ready to burn them immediately, either. So yeah, I'm not like sure... The, the model is, the, is like the only thing in his list that really wants to hang back, too. Like there's nothing, He doesn't really have anything in his list that he can just leave behind. Right. And I can see yeah. where if he had like some skeleton archers or something, and you could just camp those on them, but he doesn't have anything like that. So it's a little... It's a little weird. Um, I don't know if he's just planning on like abandoning those, but leaving them there, and going out to fight, or, or what? Right? Like I feel like he would have at yeah. least deployed something to hold them and burn them, so that he doesn't have to worry about those gargoyles flying around behind him and landing on one and and getting a getting a late turn victory point out of it or something. I don't know. Uh, what do you guys also, think? There's something to this I'm missing? Yeah, because I also feel like sure. However. Um... The ones on the bottom have been deployed. They make sense for how the units have been deployed. So part of me was like, why would you put them in your deployment zone at all if you weren't going to put units on them? And they're very far back in the deployment zone too. They're not just just on the line or anything like that either. I'd be Where you're expecting to, know to maybe just who who put the ones on the top down, right? Like yeah, right. If Thomas, because like, Thomas's list is, has units that he can hold back. Whereas Chris doesn't, so because the one behind the building on the right, like that's going to be very tough for Chris. He doesn't have anything that can go back late game either, except for maybe the Rev King. Everything right. else is kind of slow. Yeah, I don't. Know. Seems interesting choices. Like I wonder if uh, uh, Thomas put the two in the middle on either side. Um, and then maybe one of the ones in one of the deployment zones. Um, and then someone was just like, just kidding. I'm going to put all these over here. Like maybe Chris put all the ones in the deployment zones. Yeah. I don't yeah. Know. Yeah, yeah. Chris's list wants them all in the middle. <laughs> yeah. Chris's list wants them in the middle, which is, which is why it's weird. Cause you, you get three, you get to drop three. So yeah. I would expect if you don't want any in the deployment zones that you might end up with two on one side or one in each deployment zone if uh, yeah. if Thomas was like kind of hedging his bets on who wins uh, the role to pick sides. Um, yeah, no, I would expect I would expect to see more tokens in the middle. Um, yeah, it's definitely maybe possible that Thomas goes Thomas goes first, dropping his, um, and starts by putting them in the deployment zones. That would really only give um, give Chris one one shot at one of those other four outside tokens. Yeah. And then by then, if that's his last token drop, you say, okay, do I want to put one in the middle and risk having one side weighted more than the other? Probably not. So then you once just drop it in the other deployment zone as well. Yeah, once your opponent puts one in a, in, in a deployment zone, you kind of are forced to put one in, your, in one of the in the opposite deployment zone just to balance it out. Mm -hmm. But I feel like, did it have to, like, most of them are very deep in the deployment zone too, which is not necessarily yeah. where most of these armies want to be. That's true. Yeah. Yeah, it's interesting. And it looks like uh, Thomas has won the <coughs> roll to go first, and I'm guessing he will opt to go first because I don't know why you wouldn't. This is one of those, another one of those scenarios where we've seen like very high, like um, the victory after having first turn is really, really huge. You need that first turn. 
in yeah. this scenario. Especially if you if you get the, the advantage that Thomas has here of having done some scout moves and then also getting the opportunity to go first. You can you can basically burn a token just about anywhere off on the table that's not a deployment zone if you really want to. You yeah, almost get to have, have two have first the, turns. The two in the middle are his, like right off the bat if he takes first, because those spearmen are yeah. movement six, yeah. right? So it's kind of unfortunate that he ended up with just the one troop of cavalry against those spearmen. Interested, and he's handed first turn over to his opponent. You don't yeah. see that every day. I was going to say no. that actually might work out for him though against all shambling with a lot of yeah. short range threat. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. gonna be yeah. hard for him to get up and in, into those middle tokens. I guess maybe he's also thinking he does have like the gargoyles and stuff that you know, if they're alive at the end of the game, could fly over and take that last victory point needed or have that last turn in the bottom of six. But interesting choice. Yeah, Pegasus as well. So he has a couple of very yeah, that's what he does with the Pegasus pieces that you're right. strength. So he's some very like maneuverable um, cheap things that can go jump on objectives as needed. But I don't know, it's always an interesting choice. Like, like Alex Chavez always makes a point for like always take first so that you can dictate what your opponent has to do. Your opponent has to react to you to some extent. Um, and it's not that there is a ton of scout to really offset that first turn like we saw last night in the stream where losing first turn wasn't so bad because there was so much scout that he essentially had a first turn anyways. So it does it, it does mitigate going second if you already have you know 500 points of your army you know six or up seven up on a hill threatening points. everything. Yeah yeah. That helps. Yeah. But I mean, like, it's three units rather than, like, the entire army being able to move up. So. Yeah, but that, Michael's point about shambling makes a big difference because, like, everything on Chris's side of the board can only move, you know, can at the double. So it's like, other than. Oh, yeah, and how much surge did he even up. take? He's got two surge casters. Two surge he has casters? Two priests and the monolith can surge anything. Oh yeah, the monolith surges as well. Yeah, so he does have a fair amount of surge. Like if yeah, he so. was just like, I need to get a little farther up the board, which is not really what a lot of people yeah. use surge for, but yeah, yeah I think. But it's, it's, it's good for scenarios first like turn. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So as, as far as just just like match up between these two lists, it is kind of interesting to note talking about the the surge casters. Um, the surge and the drain life seem like they're really big in this EOD list, like in most EOD lists. Um, but Thomas has a ton of tools to take care of individuals um, and, and shut down a lot of that casting. Well, he has Drain Life too, and he has Mikhail and the Assassin, so that's... And the Pegasus. Yeah. And, the Pegasus and the Pegasus, yeah. The Gargoyles and the Pinch. Four. The Height 4 and the Pegasus, I think, will be important. There's mm -hmm. a lot of Height 3 on uh, Chris's army. Yeah. And you love me a good old Pegasus. All right, so um, question of whether Chris was going to try to leave anything back to sit on those two tokens has pretty pretty thoroughly been answered here as he's taken the top of the first turn and uh, just rolled out. I think ju judging by how the end of deployment when Thomas picked table side, I think, so that would explain some of that. Hmm. So is his strategy here basically like those I like those those two objectives in, in my deployment zone, like nothing is going to get near them. I'm just gonna roll forward as fast as I can, take the middle, hold it. That's three points, then you gotta fight me. And then I'm in close an and I can drain life and grind and yeah. you can't claim an objective if you're dead. Yeah. I'm, then true. you're just play, you can just play kill sometimes and uh, that can win you the game. Yeah, if yeah, if, if I were if I were Chris, I would actually make getting rid of those gargoyles a top priority on that right flank, because um, yeah. you got to get within get six to drain life. It otherwise nothing will hit it. They can they can literally just hide next to that building, and then in the last turn, jump up and take that objective. And if they're tied or close at that point, like it could be a game changer. Could be yeah. Could 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 turn a win into a draw or a draw into a victory. Um, well, looks like he did serve snare. some rev cap forward. The soul mm -hmm. snare still does have that long range drain life, right? Yeah, it's 18 inches. Yeah, it's 18. 
Yeah, so that, I mean that could that could just drop that unit of gargoyles in a turn late in the game oh, if, if they're both still around. Was it during yeah. like seven nine? It's enough, but nine. Um, yeah, during life nine. Yeah, yep. that'll do it. That'll do for those little baby gargoyles. Well, yeah, def defense three, so yeah, everything every hit will stick pretty much. It's essentially a wound. Yeah, so it looks like he is taking this opportunity to search some things forward. Yeah, get the, red cap up on the, get the leader point up on that hill, which is important. Yep, and he's going to... Uh, looks like drain life from the Soul Snare onto the four Shamblers on the hill who are just barely within range. One, One. One wound. That will come back next turn with the Radiance. The yeah, the Tree Herder has Radiance of Life, so... Just one aggressive. extra. It makes you feel good. You did a little something. Mm -hmm. It's a pretty aggressive first turn. Uh, what do we think about the positions he's taken up here? Is this is there something that he should have done differently, or do we feel pretty good about where he's with all his things? I think he has to be aggressive. Just like we were talking about, like he has to come up and he says, has to start removing units <laughs> just to prevent anything from like, to make. Thomas holds stuff back and not just jump over his lines with the Pegasus and Gargoyles. He wants to like put pressure him to get rid of those chaff pieces. Yep. Yeah. And I think this is a scenario where hanging back, unless you really have the placement for holding on to objectives for a long term, um, it really doesn't help him. He needs to get up. He needs to get for those middle objectives because his list isn't meant to sit back on those two in the deployment zone. So um Get up there, kill your opponent. I think it's a good position. Yeah. I do want to point out that Chris has a single scoring unit advantage over Thomas. Um, even though they both have the same number of drops, Thomas has a, an, an, an additional individual, an additional non-scoring unit uh, over Chris. And usually Alpha. usually with scenarios like this, like once the, once the, the killing starts, when it gets down to the end, it's more important how many individual scoring units you have to hold objectives, not really how much unit strength you have. Yeah, there's usually just a handful of units left at the end. There's not a lot mm -hmm. of contesting. Yeah, it doesn't matter if you have one horde left that has a bunch of your unit strength when you right. only have one horde left. Like, right. unless you unless the objectives are close enough for you to straddle two of them. With yeah, it. and be one of these. They're like, we're helping. Let me touch both of them. Stretch. Stretch. Yeah. Stretch. Oh, that, oh, that spear horde was on top of a, a wall. Okay. But yeah, I think that horde is about the only thing that could do that could contest two objectives. Everything else is yeah. too small. Mm -hmm. So it's interesting. He he backed his gargoyles up and turned them sideways to face towards the middle of the table. Um, I think he's just at a 16 of those of that rev cap troop. He's my only thought is I wonder too if he's like, in case he's yeah. really worried about losing that back right corner objective, that the gargoyles can just fly over and burn it before um, he ends up actually losing it. He's left the archers still touching the woods. So I don't yeah. wonder if he's going to actually back them up. I mean, they're kindred archers is regiment. It's not like having the, them shooting is that. It's ten attacks. I don't that think that troop has a charge on the next turn. That, so. Yeah, they'll, and they'll I mean, I don't think you're taking out it. that shooting is going to probably take out the rev cab troop. So no, but back them up buys inspired. you a turn. And you, you buys you a turn. Yeah, if you back the archers up. Yeah, so I would back. That's really not enough to deny that flank, right? A group no. of gargoyles and a regiment of kindred archers are not going to hold up. No, but if you back the archers up, then it takes one more turn to get into position to start killing them. Right. Yeah. But that's why I wonder if you put the gargoyles kind of where he did, is that if it comes to that they're going to die mm. and that the archers are going to die, he can burn that token. Like, have an extra insurance on burning it? I'm not sure. Sure. But the, uh, I mean, the archers are already within, within three, though. Um, yeah, so they can do it. Their units make two. So. Someone else is popular, it sounds like. 
fives and threes, like the archers will survive the true. But... Hmm? Oh, it's the troop charges the archers. It's on fives and threes, so they'll survive. Oh, I thought you were meant like the, I, the way I heard it, I thought you were talking about the archers shooting into them, and I was like, that's not going to be on threes to wound, my dude. <laughs> Piercing two archers, that's how elves are, right? <laughs> yeah. Didn't you know they're super great in third? The best. Well, every Twilight Can army has at least one uh, regiment I've seen. <laughs> so they must be good. They must be. Next they tier. It's not, a, it's not an unlocks issue. All right. Oh, that's a look at that charge. <laughs> <laughs> Put the ruler across the whole board. I am speed that's 48. Fun. When we realize he's like hidden, hidden bolt throwers underneath some unit that's about to pop out and shoot or something like that. Oh, come yeah, on. The tree, the, wrong game. Wrong game. The Shamblers <laughs> are height height six right now, so they block line of sight for the Rev King. So I think he's trying to hide the Pegasus. Sure. Mm. Yeah, that makes sense. From the uh, yeah, from the Rev King. Yeah. I really like where he's where he's put his his Revenant King here. You know, flying it up, turning it sideways. Yeah. Let's so see in the middle of the board. Um, yeah. It's a strong position. It is. It, it keeps these these abyssal horsemen kind of in check because they can't move forward without potentially getting charged by it, um, and they can't do anything about it right now because they can't get into its flank. I'm assuming that the um, that Rev Cav regiment is out of range of the the two horsemen regiments, right? Let's see. Let's see. No, they're so, in range. No, no, they're in. Yeah, they're both good. Uh, let's both see if they can good. both. Get it. Man, I might just throw them both in there. If they would protect each other's flank and have the other two units in the front of them. Uh, what is that yeah. next to the Rev Cab Troop? The 50 mil? Shovik. Shovik. Uh, <laughs> we don't want Shovik. Then you get Shovik. Then you get Shovik. Yeah, ow. Yeah, so I think I think that's basically the trap he said. It's a, uh, you can double charge this, this Rev Cab regiment. Take a, take a key unit out, but then you will probably have a Rev King in your flank. And Shovik. And Shovik either in your flank or front. And some well, remnant keg, and, and then a guy would drain life and surge. So, yeah. Yes, yeah, so you'd basically have to turn family. to face on both sides if you break the unit, and uh, and yeah. then you probably either he's just going to ignore you with the dragon anyways, and probably fly over you and do something dirty over there. Well, I think if you, in, there if you put in um, if you put in both units of the of the horsemen, they probably the the leftmost one probably has that worm in its front, and then yeah. will protect mm -hmm. the flank of the other one. Um, yeah. yeah, but you'll still get flanked by Shovik, unfortunately. Um, I don't know. I, well, it might be worth it to lose that one. Um, to get rid one of one regiment to to get rid of the one regiment of horse. Have your horseman deep and force him to either engage you in the front with his worm or send the worm to do something else. And if he does, yeah. then you have that horsebound unit, the crownbound horseman unit, um, behind his stuff. At that point, they could just go sit on that back objective if they wanted to, or turn around to threaten uh, themselves. True. And you do still have the True. forest shamblers and the tree herder up on the hill threatening. Yeah, you, you have know. a lot threatening a counter um, after whatever yeah. comes into the horseman. I'm just waiting for tree herder on Shovik, like head to head. <laughs> Clash Battle. Of the in the middle of the board. Yeah. Clash of the Titans that are not actually Titans. Yes. High density Titans. It's not <laughs> yeah. Just a really fat 50 mil tree. That's the tree herder, you know? He's just dense. What does Mikhail's special rule do? Does anyone know? Sort of Umbra? I think he gets the double attacks versus monsters and individuals. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, that's that's an awesome ability. That character is yes. so good. Well, he's definitely sending him on the right side of the table, then, right, right where all the monsters are. Good placement on that part. Yep. But, yeah, so I think what he was checking there was to make sure that he could put Mikhail there, uh, and the dragon would not be able to fit to charge him in between the shamblers and the horsemen. But I guess that, that, that suggests that he's not planning on moving the horsemen or the shamblers anywhere this turn. Yeah, that yeah. sounds like he's not going to take that double charge, then. Yeah, he just pivoted the shamblers to like kind of put everything in their front. Yeah. Positioned everything behind them. Right. So, so at this point, he's saying, uh, 
you can double or triple charge the shamblers. Let's see. Yeah. Uh, and that's about it. Or you can send your RevCav regiment into one of my Runbound Horsemen regiments. Yeah. So it looks like we're seeing not a lot of movement really from Thomas's side. Not much changed really. The middle moved up a little, but the left flank essentially stayed the same. Well, he has those back two objectives, right? So yep. you can let Chris come to you, and if you can survive and counter charge, Chris is moving away from his back objectives. You're still on yours. And you still have the resources like the Pegasus and stuff to be like, well, I'll just leave everything behind and go for the one in your deployment as well. Yep. Yeah, so the standard bearer with the Zephyr crown wind blasted these enslaved guardians back until they bumped into the monolith. And now the kindred archers are shooting at the Revcav troop. Only doing a couple of wounds, which is not going to be enough against inspired Revcav. Just, dub just double six twice, right? Yeah. The only heal from them is the... Roll double fives. The only heal from them is Drain Life, right? I think so, yeah. Yeah. Drain Life 7. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a ton of drain life on the um, EOD side, but um, yeah. no, gotta get close. Heal. yeah, got to get close. And you got to get line of sight too, because all those rev cap are the same height as those. Yeah, priests. Rev, you can put two wounds on a rev cap troop, roll a ten, and still not waver them. So that's oh. sad. I feel like that's such a good nerve roll to use there, where you're like kind of just rolling the nerve to be like, did I randomly roll double sixes? No, but I used up a really good nerve roll. <laughs> Keep on rolling. Keep rolling tens and elevens and twelves. So yeah, so you're Chris. Uh, what are you trying to do on this turn? Like uh, Thomas basically just moved up, shot a little bit at you, left you a couple of charges that aren't great. Do you keep maneuvering for better position? Oh, yeah, because the ref can have one-on-one -on -one with the Abyssal Horseman is not a great matchup. No, it's not. And he'll get countercharged. Can can the Rev King see both Horseman units? Can't see either. Well, he can see the right one, but is it in our... The Rev King's facing to the middle, yeah. The right? Yeah, none of, none, none out of, out of our... Out of our they're, both, they're both out of our... Okay. They're both out of our, yeah. Uh, looks like he was maybe checking to see if he could get his revenant into the flank of the forest shamblers and surge them in, but uh, that might not have been a valid option for him, so he backed off. That'd be a long surge. I feel like wasn't like it with more than two inches? Yeah. yeah, how much would he have needed? He move eight, a four or five, probably. Yeah. Yeah, he'd probably need a five. Um, but that would be a really put them if they could do it, kill them. That would put them in a really good position. Um, we, have, we have a question too in the chat about why. Do you folks have any insight as to why they chose to shoot those archers instead of backing them out of the forest? We kind of asked the same question, Justin. Yeah, I'm not sure. That's probably would have been. That. I don't know if those two were, wounds are worth putting them at risk. No. The um, the the regiment on that right side. I'm assuming out of range of the archers, or are they just yeah. still like behind the hill somehow? No, they're uh, they they onto the hill. In, <clears throat> they're just about just over 17 inches away. So okay. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I don't hate it with nothing to heal that troop. They I mean they might not even do any damage if they come in with only eight attacks on fives. Um, it's true. Yeah, and then I guess the archers are basically the same in combat as they are shooting, so you're just starting the grind one turn early. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it doesn't buy you much other than a turn to back them out. But a lucky roll, a hot roll, and get you know a few points of damage early on mm -hmm. them. You never know. Could. I don't know. This isn't this isn't much of a flank denial force for the Twilight Kin over here on the right. Um, so I kind of feel like the longer you can delay that Revcav troop and regiment and Cursed High Priest from Turning towards the middle, the better. Um, yeah, and I don't know whether yeah, you, staying visible and drawing them in 
keeps them around for a turn longer than if you back up and they're like, okay, well, screw this. We're not going to bother. We're just going to turn and run away from you. Because yeah, now you're not threatening us either. Yeah, that's, that's definitely what you want to happen. If he backed up, he wouldn't have a charge. And the next turn, if he moved up to get into charge range, he could just slide step, side step to the left again. And then the regiment wouldn't even have line of sight. So That's fair. But all the while, you're still keeping a whole objective. And, and you're yeah. keeping two or three units uh, busy without their yeah, exactly. Contributing. I guess that's the, one of the, the, the nice things about Salt the Earth, too, is that he's always got that failsafe of just blowing up the token if it yeah. goes poorly back there. Right. Mm -hmm. And I guess another thing that, it, that he also wants to do is draw that uh, Cursed High Priest forward and get him involved in supporting the Revenant Cab against the Elves. <laughs> So that he can maybe turn his gargoyles and fly them behind the hill, where he, he, he doesn't have to worry about them getting drained life off the table by that by that priest, and he can get them back yeah. there to or hold. Even just the getting that objective. getting that priest away, keeping the priest away from the middle, where like for a few turns. Keeping yeah. that drain life away from all those grinds is huge too. Yeah. The, yeah. the hard turn of the gargoyles is the only part that I don't really get about that, but. Um, you could turn them so that they could look to help without just not being able to see down down the board at all. Because yeah, they're facing just, the middle. Yeah, so yeah, like yeah. you could just turn them at like a forty-five instead of like a full ninety to face the left side of the board. Yeah, uh, and then they'd be have a little bit more in terms of options. Yeah. Okay, so someone jump inside their brain and tell me what they were thinking. That'd be great. It might have been the only way to get it of a 16 of the rev cap. That's so fair, too. Mm -hmm. 6, 9, 12, 15, 16. Yeah, I mean, they are out of 16, but he is turned all the way sideways, so he could have, and and the, the regiment is even yeah, further he back. Just backed straight up. Yeah, he could yeah. have, have just backed up, turned a little bit, because even there, turning the full uh, 90 degrees, he still hasn't put his corner into their ch charge range, so he certainly could have stayed at a 45 yeah. and been fully out. And been a little closer, even. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know. How far is the twenty for those gargoyles? Yeah, it's just just nothing else. There's nothing else but that side that they would are going to be able to get into. So I just don't, I don't know. Unless he plans next turn to just fly him out straight twenty and then get that pivot at the end to adjust. Mm -hmm. I just don't. Maybe yeah, he wants them in the. Maybe he wants them in the middle to help support the spearmen and impalers. Yeah, With possibly, that. but it may just be too late for that by the time he gets them in position to do anything. Yeah. I don't know. And even that 45 degree would have kind of, he would have been able to hop, hop over the forest too. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that probably would have been a better, been a better for that. Mm -hmm. Maybe he's trying to distract and confuse everyone. <laughs> well, I'm distracted and confused. <laughs> Success. But I mean, I don't know if he had to do anything to get me there, but you know. Right. Yeah. I'm always, I'm always still ice coffee. It's a just long game, so it's like you could you never know what the long plan is, right? Yeah. Right. Yeah, we only really get that small piece and like we don't know his whole plan for the game, so it makes it a little harder to guess the actions of just one unit. Mm -hmm. In some cases. So do you send the the rev cab troop there on the right, just in into the woods and into the elves, even though you might not do a wound. Just doesn't doesn't seem like there's much to gain there. Like yeah, if this grind starts going south for Thomas, he'll just push the button. Blow it no. up. It's a tough yeah, yeah it, it's a tough spot because you know you could be going over there to battle and and get nothing. But if you ignore it, he gets the, he doesn't blow up the token and gets it. So it's just it's a tough spot to right. be in. Right. I'm just trying to think. Of like, you send the rev cab troop in. They're they're in the way. Then there's nothing in the way of the regiments. If the gargoyles are looking the wrong direction, you could just turn the regiment and send it basically to where the, the troop is right now and be ready to thread in the middle with a, a whole regiment instead of just a troop. I mean, yeah, also the thing is too is if he just if he did charge the archers and the archers decide to pull the pin and blow up the token, that was a token you probably weren't getting yourself anyways, and you've stopped your opponent from getting to have as well. Right. Yeah. Like Denying it means that then point. Thomas does have to worry about fighting for one of the middle objectives a little more 
because he doesn't get that like free token sitting in his uh, deployment zone. Right. Because over there on the left, like he definitely doesn't want to leave any of those units babysitting that token. Like those those two horsemen units are most of the punch in his list. Yeah. I feel like. Mm -hmm. So then you're basically mm -hmm. going to be like, okay, so you blow up the token that you're sitting on. Now, neither you or your opponent gets that one. So now you have to decide whether or not to run your horsemen up, which should be up doing some fighting, or sit back on a token. So then if right. you run off the token, you're basically at the same place you guys were with just fighting over three in the middle. But I think that's where Thomas is thinking is, is he wants to draw Chris in so he can still use his horsemen, but stay on that objective. Yeah. I don't know. I feel like I feel like that Pegasus is going to come in really handy with mm -hmm. these back objectives. Yeah. Wait, well, yeah, if he overcommits, if he overcommits on the left, it can just hop over. It might keep that rev cap troop busy. Like he might have to position that to be on Pegasus duty. Interesting here. So he's he's moved the rev cab regiment up, but it looks like he's no longer on the hill for thunderous charge purposes since he's moved it more than half off. Uh, mm -hmm. It seems weird because he's three, six, yeah, nine. You would. Um, I mean, though, part. what are what are the defense on the archers again right now anyways? They're to four. Uh, four. Yeah, so you so it doesn't really change three. anything because they're, they're thunderous too, right? Yeah, but you yeah, want to yeah. lose one. Woods. You would lose one, yeah. So I guess you would just like stay on the hill to negate the one you would lose. Yeah, so you so you still wound on twos when you hit them, even when you're hindered. Yeah, yeah you that's fair. Three. I kind of just was like forgetting the trees for a sec there, because I was like, right. well, why do you need three if you're already wounding on twos? Right, but they're yeah. cavalry but they're, without pathfinder. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They've, but the reason the reason you push him up that far too, though, is that next turn he can get that flank surge if the archers don't move. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's a good point. Okay, yeah, that's a good yeah. point. Yeah, because he's only nine, just over nine inches away. So. And see now, and, this, and the gargoyles, the gargoyles are not in position to do anything about this. No, because yeah, they can't see. Right, they can't see either the regiment or either. the group. Yeah, I mean he can or always the, just go drop it in front priest. of them, but he can't get the charge on them at least. Yeah, um, and he has offered a flank charge to the archers. It'll be a hindered flank charge against the troop. Um. But of course, then then he just you know turns turns the regiment, moves and surges them into the elves out of the woods, and it pulls the elves off of the token so they can't burn it anymore. Mm -hmm. This is a pretty strong commit toward that side, though. So so this would be the opp opportunity for Thomas to take those gargoyles over the top. Yeah, just yeah, drop exactly. them back there, and and yeah. you know at at worst you force him to take that regiment of revenant cavalry backwards mm -hmm. to go deal with them. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which also commits your priest high priest turn. back. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Buys you another no, turn no. before there's serious pressure on the middle from that flank. Yeah, so he yeah, he could just get over onto that hill behind the red cab with the gargoyles. Yeah. Well, and it feels like a lot of the movement that we're seeing that's kind of for this turn has been on that right flank, whereas the rest is kind of just like this no you go, no you go. Um, we haven't really seen any movement come from uh, Chris's side on the top there. He's like yeah, that's the, twiddling, that's but the, we haven't seen anything. That's the flank yet. to play with, right? Sometimes yeah, that, that, that's how it happens in a game. It's like there's one flank that's kind of disposable or you can be a little reckless with, and the other one where there's just like an epic stare down happens. And it's like we're yeah. going to wait for reinforcements from the other flank to get here. We don't know whose side those reinforcements will be on, but we're going to wait for them. Yeah, or we just wait for someone to get impatient and make a mistake. That Yeah, that too. Yeah, that's me. I'm like, I'm impatient. I want to roll dice. So there you go, world. That's the strategy to beat me. Yeah, because neither list really has much like long range pressure shooting. So it's just like mm. they can just stand off staring at each other. Mm. Surge. Interesting. So is he trying to look at, again at getting that surge into the flank with the rev cap yeah. regiment? I don't I don't think his leader point is in the flank there, is it? No. Yeah. I, don't, I don't think it is. He was oh, I showed it. 
Hi, Shobik. Uh, okay. Sure. Okay, so he'll contact the flank. I guess that. No, I guess and that, that how it works. So I, I forget if it's at the start of the um, shooting phase or if it's if the you start contact of that third. the corner. If you t contact the corner, it's where the leader point is. But if you guess if you contact the facing, it doesn't matter where the leader point is. I think that's how it works. It's where it's where the surge. It's it's where the unit was when you cast the surge that brought them into contact. So okay, if he's that, planning yeah, that's, on that's casting surge twice. Yeah, because if it takes him two, then he'll get into that flank. Then he'll get in the flank exactly. But that's yeah. So but the thing is, if right now he's not he's not contacting the corner, he will if he goes straight forward, he'll contact the flank so that it will be a flank charge. The Leader sure. point only matters if you only contact the corner. That's true. Yeah. So that's why he oh, said he lined it up so that, that he'll. So yeah. Okay. He'll, he'll clip the. He'll hit the, he'll back. Hit the flank. Mm -hmm. yeah. so so like a straight line. Surge sixteen. Here. Hold on. So that's Let me cool. use my phone. I will draw a straight line. <laughs> I feel like this is I think it does hit the just just after just past the corner on the flank. Okay. And I he think this is five. A... Looks like. Serious underestimation yeah. of what Mikhail can do, though, because he may just lose Shobik and those Cav. The 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 Chromebound Cav can pick up that Rev um, Rev Cav Regiment together, yeah, and Mikhail, right. with a little bit of help, can kill Shobik. Well, the Assassin the and won't have the Assassin is back. Train there. Life Nine. Yeah, train the Assassin, nine. the Pegasus, the Train Life. I think he's got enough tools to get there, with Mikhail doing most of the work. I mean, it's, it's still not That's easy. Fun. It's never easy to kill Shobik, but it, it's he's more in danger than it's you dash, would normally think. Dash 18, right? So on 12 attacks, he's going to get maybe seven wounds. All right, moving on to shooting. So that's the final placements we've seen. Not a lot of movement besides the Rev Cav Regiment and then all the movement we discussed on the right flank. Mm -hmm. So let's see if you can get his search needs, too. There's the monolith. Yep, start with the monolith. See what you get. Looking for five Drum successes. Roll. Drum roll. Three. Three. Two more. And the high priest is throwing out seven. Mm -hmm. Should be able to get it. Yeah. Oh, but you know, this is when he rolls one. Oh, well, no, he's not. And a big four. <laughs> a lot of twos, but. There. See, I told you where I was going to land. The phone measuring on the, the screen <laughs> works great. Next level analytics. The little the little line drawing tool is very nice. If you visit observe. Yeah, I would love though if if in um in UB if we could have some sort of line, like we yeah. have the angle markers for line of sight. Mm -hmm. Um. But if yeah, there was something the, the that kind of forward. drew a straight line so that you could see exactly where your unit would go straight forward, if you're going to clip a building or yeah. something. Um, yep. Yeah. Like, like when you turn on the backup camera on your car and it shows you the lines of where your wheels are going to go behind you so you can tell if you're going to hit something or not. Yeah. yeah. That's yes, kind of I have a yeah, fancy just... car that does that too. Yes, Mike. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. Yeah. It's like, so you have the, yeah, the Arca site, just add like train tracks in front of the unit. Yeah. Train tracks. Just, and just, maybe it could be two rails, you could turn yeah. on either, but like sometimes when you're trying to get into a position to do a movement mm -hmm. into a flank or trying to do a charge or whatever, you're trying to get the right angle to see if it works and you're like, okay, hold on, let me try 16 different variations. Right. It would save a lot of time. Yeah, just so it looks like uh, the soul bottom. snare did uh, the soul snare did drain life on those four shamblers on the hill and did a couple of wounds. Yeah, did two wounds. And it's, yeah, Shobik is out of arc for the tree herder. Oh, the tree herder, yeah. Yeah. So it'll kind of depend on how he reforms everything. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure that there's a way to keep Mikhail from getting into Shobik if he really wants to, though. No. There's the right, rep cab. So 21 hits. hits on, oof, so 32 dice, 21 hits on fours. Owie. It's a touch over average. Pretty yeah. good. There are Thunders too, so he'll be, what, winning on threes? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Threes, yeah. 14, 14 wounds. That's definitely... Didn't even need Shobik. <laughs> no. He probably didn't need yeah. the drain life either. Yeah. Currently on a 
Well, that, that puts them on snakes, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they're yeah. like not even going to roll show big. Fair enough. And a 12 yeah. and a yeah. 4. And that will pick them up. So that is first blood. Four with a four shambles. Never stood a chance. Hmm. All right. Now, is there is there a way on this reform? I mean... Yeah. To keep Shobik out of out of danger, keep out of out of danger for Mikhail. No. I don't think so because he's so tall. I think even if he backs off the hill, you're still going to be yeah, able to see him. Five. Yeah, yeah. So you still see him over the hill. Yeah, Just so embrace there's really, it. There's really nothing you can do. You're you're going to get like an assassin yeah. and a monster killing character on you. <clears throat> yeah, he's got crush to dread. And delete. Yeah, so he's going to get like 10 hits. Five wounds with dread. Five wounds with dread. I mean, he won't do it this turn, but give him a couple no. turns. So he's dash 16, so it's going to take a while to kill him, too. And he's got iron resolve, so. Dash 16. I thought he was, for some reason, I thought he was like dash. Oh, no, yeah, he's show, dash 18. Show, show, show Is Shogun also, here. like, where's the oh, line of sight? I'm talking about Mikhail, yeah. Can I just yeah, see like the line of sight on the uh, force warden? The force boy? The tree herder? Okay. I just went the tree herder. That's what I meant. Sorry. I just was seeing because I want to see if he was out of arc, which he is. Yeah. 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 Oh, sorry. I was talking about Mikhail. Mikhail is dash 16. Yeah, no, no. I know Mikhael yeah. is in. Yeah, he's yeah, he's not going to kill Shobik in one shot, but Shobik's not going to kill him in one shot either. No. Uh, no, no but I, I was think seeing Mikhail probably, probably wins that grind after a couple of turns. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, Shobik has Life Leech 1 and Iron Resolve, so he's going to be getting 2 back. And then... Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. It'll be a bit of a... He might actually mm. win it if no one helps. If no one helps, yeah. But then, presumably, even, even if those two are still standing after a turn of fighting, then you're talking about backup being uh, a Revenant and a Worm and a troop of Revcav against two regiments of Crumbound horsemen. So yeah, and a tree herder on the hill. Yeah, yeah and depending on which way the tree herder turns. Yeah, the tree herder could just go do something else, really. But but you know, if he needs him, he's there too. So right. it just doesn't look great for for Chris in the long yeah. term on that flank. Yeah. All right, over to the bottom of two. Bottom of two. Thomas is turn two. Mm -hmm. um, looks like he might be measuring to see if the Pegasus can run over there and smack the Soul Snare. Yeah, Maybe? I think he's checking yeah. line of sight. Does he have Shobik blocks his leader point? Uh, yeah. Can we zoom in a little to see if it's... Mm. Yeah, like he doesn't get... It looks like he's just out or just blocked. Yeah. Okay. I should to see it. Thank you, Mike. I think you can see around it, but I don't think, I think, can't quite see the soul snare, though, because that's his line of sight yeah. right there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I feel like that was an inadvertent. Woohoo. Yeah. Happy accident. Happy accidents. Wait, what was his We don't make mistakes, yeah, just happy maxed, accidents. He maxed his overrun, yeah. So. Yeah. And Mikhail will be in the front. Um, you throw the assassin in there too, or is it not worth it? I'd maybe do the drain life over the assassin because he might, Shobik might one shot the assassin and then just go back into Mikhail as well. Where, where is the assassin? Is he? Is that what's right behind the tree herder? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So that the assassin I'll, can reach that first high priest. Speed seven. seven right? No, oh, no, he can. Sorry. No, he oh, can't. Can he's, seven. he's just in. He's just if the, in. If the tree herder gets out of the way so we can see it, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's probably that's probably best bet if we move the tree herder somewhere else and get that. With uh, thunderous charge. So that's, yeah. that's big. And duelist, so eight attacks on him. Like, yeah, that'll. 
Oh man, I, I never run an assassin without the wings of Honey Maze, so all of this stuff in my head is as if he's flying. I didn't even think about the Thunderous, <laughs> I didn't think about his charge range. Um, yeah, he's just in, and he'll get the bonus. So that's yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. Five, four or five wounds. That's they are, are, are they dualists? Oh. They are. They are. Yeah, they're dualists. They're dualists. Yeah. yeah. Attacks, I feel like dualists. you can't really run an assassin without having the dualists. Like, that's like. That well, I can't can remember if they come with it by default. I know that the Rat King yeah, ones do. do. And I'm pretty yeah, sure that the elite. Kingdoms of Men one has it too. Yeah, and they're elite. So yeah, he's getting six hits. Crush two. Thunder's <laughs> one. And I love this. I love that image of like there's a tree herder on a hill, right? Who like sidesteps and this one little elf just screams and comes tearing down the hill and running across this open field and just yeah. runs right up and like jumps on the jumps on the priest's horse and starts stabbing the shit out of him. Ah! Okay, no, the let's right just is the tree herder actually throwing the assassin. Yeah. <laughs> well, I was thinking, is the, is the assassin like jumping out of the tree yeah. off the tree herder? That'd be good. It's like a blood bowl move when the tree herder throws the halflings. <laughs> yep. The old fastball. Right. Yeah, because how tall is a tree herder? Man. Real tall, five, right? High five. 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 Yeah, so so funny. Just like the height difference. The tr is the tree herder in as well? It looks like it's. Is it just out of twelve? How fast is a tree herder? Tree herder speed six. Let me yeah. see. No, it looks like it's in. Yeah, it is. Uh, he couldn't double charge if he did that, though. No, it'd be one or the other, but still. Yeah. Hilarious. I think I would I think rather I would keep the tree herder. Yeah, yeah that's risking uh, flank on the tree herder if he doesn't. He wouldn't be it. able to. He won't be able to one shot. Can we see the can we see the the flying worms arc? Yeah. So I, it's hard for me to see, but is it the um, basically if the those two horsemen regiments go into the rev, yeah, they're still going to be out of arc if they just stay where they are after after killing it. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which is lovely. Yeah, that's a really strong position for for Thomas. Mm -hmm. Getting rid of three unit strength and staying safe. That's huge. <clears throat> Excuse me. And staying on the objective. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's and... really the objective. Yeah, yeah. So I, I really wish that that Revenant King wasn't wasn't uh, staring straight down the middle of the board. I wish he had his angle a little, little yeah, different. Yeah, he stayed a, an inch away or whatever. He could have mm -hmm. angled more down table. Yeah, because mm -hmm. he could easily see the corner of this rightmost uh, horseman unit and still be in their flank, so they couldn't charge him. Mm -hmm. Yep, but no, he didn't go. He didn't need to be flush. He just needed to be somewhere where, like, the the abyssal horseman couldn't fit. So, he yeah. could have had it so that, like, his front was like angled from the corner of the building, and everything still yeah. would have probably been in his flank to an extent, and then nothing would have been able to fit in there. Yeah, there's lots of room to play. With that. Arc. <coughs> <coughs> Tom is taking a taking a minute to figure out what he wants to do in this turn. Mm. It's really important to get the first couple couple of turns right. Like any little mistakes you make, just compound over the course of the whole game. Yeah, yeah. turn two and three are always the longest. I find. Yeah, I'm yeah. a big fan of burning like half of my clock in the first two turns. <laughs> Yeah, definitely done that. I feel like you get to that point where at the end of turn three and you look at your clock and you're like, oh my god, I have so little time left because I still have three turns, and then those turns go so fast. Right. But he does have to resolve this left quickly because what he has on the right, I don't think can stand up to those enslaved guardians. I don't know. Well, that that, that horde does have the hammered metric force. Yeah. Um... And impalers are not nothing to be ignored, and right. if that depends where that tree herder goes. Yeah, how far? How far? Um, on how far, how much of the hill can the worm get to distance wise? Yeah, where's? So he covers most of the hill. Looks like. Yeah, mm -hmm. almost all of it. But the tree herder could sidestep to the right and get out of range. Yeah, that's probably the best move if he can get out of range that way. That keeps him with with options one way or the other. Yeah, and then yeah, it also him him forward. Yeah, he might get like a 
flank or rear charge from these from this rev cap troop though, but I don't know how much he cares about that. Pegasus doesn't look like it has much options right now. Yeah, no, not not really. But I think yeah. the Pegasus fight like. Yeah, the Pegasus. I don't think you can see anything between the tree herder and Chobik. I think it's line of sight to everything that's blocked. Yeah, and if it flies three and three and twenty inches straight up, it'll be the in line of sight of the <laughs> the worm. I don't think he can get to the other side of the forest. Maybe he can. As long as it Nine, twelve, but it might. 18. It's no, I think he's. I think it's twenty. He's back he's... forward. He'll still stick. Stick it. Yeah. Are you, are you just talking about as far as landing? Because it does have Pathfinder. Yeah, he could land, but I, I would I would want to land outside of the forest so so that it would block line of sight from the Rev King. Oh, from the Rev King. Yeah, yeah. Right. That's... Yeah. All right. Looks like he is probably going to take this double charge. Yep. With both his horsemen on the Rev Cav regiment on the Lots left. No risk. Lots of reward. Yep. Yeah. Still staying out of Beautiful. sight. That's still uh, a front from the rev cap and troop. It's, so. it's still, it's still a front from the rev cap troop. If everything goes wrong, like he snake eyes them, or something. Still, yeah. he still only gets another rev cap troop in against two units. And then he just gets to kill those next turns. And those right. and those horseman units have crushing natively, so they don't really care and, too much about being and disordered. And fury, and yeah, regen. Yeah. yeah, they're grindy. Yeah, I yeah, love those. They guys. do not care. Oh, oh do we get the? Is oh. Assassin charging? Uh -huh. Yep. Here he uh, goes. Uh, and down the hill, screaming mad. The assassin throw. <laughs> That's definitely how I see that now. Just like it's just like a slingshot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's like a football toss. All right. Do your work. Yep. Yeah. This is the charge you have been waiting for, probably this whole tournament. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. They lined it. They lined it up. I think he should actually be angled a little bit. Yeah, yeah. the priest should have turned. You go him. straight, make contact, and the priest turns. Yeah, yeah. So they should be angled more towards the center of the table a little bit. Which I don't know if you necessarily want the overrun into the ref cap troop, but he should he should have that there, option pretty much. It looks like he has sent the Pegasus into Shobik along with Mikael. Yeah, you kind of have to. Yeah. Otherwise, you're throwing it out too far away to do anything useful anywhere. Yeah, yeah. It's just it doesn't have much. In the way of uh, good other options, and then drain life. Oh, uh -huh. Don't put your dude there. Yeah, no, that gives well, that's, the yeah. That's bad. That's bad news. Yeah, there you go. Hide him somewhere. <laughs> yeah, you don't want to. Yeah, you don't want to give the dragon he, an easy charge. He doesn't even have to. He can see over the showbix taller than the Pegasus. He can just hang out behind the Pegasus. Yeah. That's true. Does the worm kill a cronebound sorcerers? Probably. Uh, it's only five hits because they hit they hit on fours, so it's yeah, not, he won't kill it. But it's not you know you don't want five wounds for no summoner crone to Vince get disorder. Over eleven thirteen. Yeah, I don't know. They're what inspiring. Is, so what does wicked miasma do? Um, it lets him use the heal portion of the drain life on any cronebound unit within eighteen inches. Okay. But it doesn't make it harder to kill it, cop. So no, that's no. What I was, yeah. That's what I was wondering about. Yeah, but but yeah, I mean, five hits. Even oh, if those all wound, that's an eight twice. Yeah, um, it's not likely for him to kill them. So I mean, maybe that's maybe that's not a bad play. You you it's kind of bait with that worm. Order. Yeah, unless he wants to get him the worm in there for Mikael. Yeah, yeah get that worm in. Assuming, somewhere. assuming Shobik dies, and the tree herder still isn't facing that way. Yeah. So we did sidestep the tree herder. I guess it brings the worm into range of the horseman. Yeah, you're just, you're just pulling that pulling that worm um, yeah. somewhere where other units can get to it. Or yeah, where you can just get behind it. it. Right. Mm -hmm. Interesting. So, did he just turn these impalers to look up the hill? To the left, like? yeah. That seems... Help out with all that stuff. How far are those enslaved guardians 
from the Impalers. Thirteen. Dude, inches. I totally yeah. forgot there's enslaved guardians. <laughs> <laughs> Um, they have well, wild he, charge. Are they just out of thirteen? They're just out of thirteen. They, they have wild charge. The yeah, ones those on the ones left have wild charge. charge. Oh, they have the item. <laughs> I thought you were saying yeah. that they just came with it. I was like, wow, that's <laughs> what? <That'd be> pretty... <laughs> like I've never been playing those at all. Yeah, they're just well, out of thirteen. Yeah, they're just out of thirteen. Um, <laughs> yeah, both units are. Um, I don't know about those ref cab next to the enslaved guardian, so. Oh yeah, those are out too. Yeah, I guess that's fairly right. safe. If you you give up the support on the horde though, which is not great. Yeah, and yeah, it's not and it's not clear to me what you're doing. Charged, but not. I would. You can just throw one one of the troop at a time into that horde to slow it down, and then move the guardians up. Yeah, the the guardians haven't moved a whole lot so far because he moved them up last round, and then one of the the, the one with wild charge got wind blasted back, um, which is why it's not quite close enough to do anything useful this turn. Yeah, I went back with one or two inches. It got pushed back. Two it got pushed back till it bumped into the monolith. I don't know how far that was, uh, but hey, it was enough to keep it out of range for this round. So. Yeah, it saved you one more turn of it being out. Gargoyles so making a move. This scenario. Yeah. There they go. Yep. There's the gargoyles jumping up on the hill on the far right. Placement kind yeah, of where we expected. Will he? Will he turn around to drain like the? the mm -hmm. Curse high priest doesn't have a lot else to do. Well, I think that curse high priest actually has a lot to do because it's in it's in position to potentially to potentially surge the regiment into the flank of the archers. It's in mm -hmm. position to potentially serve the troop. So there's a troop into the regiment of the spear horde, um, and then but I don't think he'll be drain lifing then. He'll probably just end up having to leave those gargoyles alone. Yeah. So either you lose the surge or you go after drain lifing that gargoyles. And you still potentially keep one of those surges with the monolith, but 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 still, the cursed high priest now has to make a pretty tough choice. Yeah, I think he can get the revcav troop. In, if he doesn't move that ASB, which he didn't, he could. Uh, Charge it with the rev cap troop and then get in the flank if he does well. Yeah, yeah. of the spearman anyway. On the, on the overrun and thing. Yeah. And, it, and it looks I don't like know if that we, the ASP though. We also see that he did not That's move true. the archers at all, just left them in the same position, just towed into the woods and going to shoot the cap. Yeah. But the monolith, yeah, he only, he'll only need a two inch surge for the rev cap. Looks like, looks like only one wound on the troop. From the archers. Oh, they're still working on that same troop. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I was kind of surprised. And here's wind blast again. Two. I'm not sure that I'd be wind blasting those guardians. I think I might be wind blasting that rev troop that I just shot at. Yeah, that's what I was just thinking. Because because uh, those guardians have a backstop <laughs> in the monolith, so they're only going so far. And they were already out of charge range, so. Yep. Uh, so here's the prone bound sorceress green lifing on Shobik. Two. Power through two. Wow, that's All right. great. That is really good. That's a good start there. Mm -hmm. It's effective nerve of a dash 15 now on Shobek with the dread in consideration. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's not, that's not, not bad at all. That's, do that's doable now. It is. Manageable. Depends on what Mikhail does, I guess. Yeah. So I guess you just have nerve. Hitting on threes is the leap. You can keep you hitting all of them. He could, potentially, yeah. That's a monster, so he does get to double his attacks. And right, here comes the nerve check on the uh, red pen. And seven will do basically nothing to them. Because they thick. Because. Hmm. <laughs> I mean, they are defense five and dash 14, okay? Yeah. The epitome of thick. Oh. Ten hits. Eight. That's big. Mm-hmm. Huge. Oof. Yes, that's ten wounds on Shobik. Plus another. Pegasus. And that's before the Pegasus one, right? Too. So he might get an yeah. extra wound. Thing. Yeah, that was Mikhail. Two hits. Mm hmm. 
It's only TC1, right? So I don't think that's anything. No, I don't think yeah. so. But 10 wounds on the tr on the first turn, that is pretty big. Yeah. Seven to break. Okay. Eight. Oh, and that's oh. an eight. Ooh. Oh, oh and a three. three. <laughs> I was like... <laughs> Very close. You tried your best. Yep, so the iron resolve is back to point. Still, let's that's show me one round with nine wounds on him. That's yeah, a lot, yeah. Even a couple drain like a little leech. drain life here and yep. there to take out. The red calf. Nineteen hits. Those are toast. Dead. Yep. Yeah. D E D. Right. Let's see what he does, but I think you just don't move them at all. I think you just leave them like no, that. No, yeah. I, I think kind you stay where you are. Yeah, yeah. I kind of wish he had done the combat on the Cursed High Priest first. I feel like that's the one that gives you the most kind of information about what to do with these guys. Whether or not you have that assassin to go help pit stuff down next turn, or if he's got to go after the priest again. Yeah. Yeah, good point. <laughs> No, that's not bad either. Does it open up the flank? To the yeah, it lets the rev troop into the flank potentially if it's got range. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, yeah. I guess not if you do that. It's like, no, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> Just kidding. I mean, that might yeah. give the rev cap troop the flank on the uppermost of his uh, chronbound horsemen, though. Now they can pivot out and move their eight down and then give surge into the flank. Yeah. Mm hmm. I guess that's maybe why he was looking about sidestepping, yeah. Yeah, eight gets you pretty close. He did pile in. That's a three inch sidestep, so that opens it up quite a bit. Yeah, he'll have to turn the other one now. Yeah. Or is it in the front? Or are they, is. is the troop in the front? It's in the oh, front, it yeah. Okay. So. All right, there's the assassin. So that's seven hits on eight dice. And that's going to be four wounds. Curse up priest is what to four. Four and wounds. Snake eyes. <clears throat> well, get it out of your system now, I guess. Yeah, at least you shut down the heal. And yep. he needed a nine, nine to kill him anyways. All right, and that's the top of three. <clears throat> I'm not sure you want to surge, Shobik, but it takes that option away or mm -hmm. limits it. And he's destroying the okay. So the archers are destroying their token. That's one token burn. Yeah, and, and that's a good call, because if he decides to take that Revcav regiment into the flank of the archers, you lose the ability to control that token to, to break it later. Yep. Yeah, yep. Have and then if you do die, he's got it. And so. If you do die, he's got it, but he's got to leave a Revcav regiment over there to hold it, because he doesn't have anything cheaper to send back there. But I guess that, that does eventually change your... Uh, wait, you just put it back? Uh, they just changed their mind, or no? I feel like that's the right thing to do is to, to get rid of that token because you've already held them up yeah. till turn. You've three. held them up for two full turns. Yep, mm -hmm. the regiment's not really in position to do much of anything other than go beat up those elves. Um, I guess yeah, part of the neat. consideration is like if you get rid of the token. You take away the incentive for that cursed high priest to focus on the revcav regiment as opposed to the gargoyles. The gargoyles, yeah. Or so, now you can just turn the revcav regiment fully around and surge it into the rear of yeah. the gargoyles. Just turn them around, surge them into the rear of the gargoyles, and then spend the next few turns just running back to his side of the board to grab that token if he wanted to. Yeah. I kind of like. Really I don't mind. All that. right. So into into or, Chris's turn three. Or you can turn them back to the center and then send that middle troop back. So I don't know if you need that middle troop right now. Yeah, yeah, one one way or the other. Um, am I Does the soul snare have unit strength? I don't know, forget it. Oh, but that's right, the monolith is. You know, monolith is a titan, but the Silsair is a war machine. war machine. Okay. So Chris still has a scoring unit advantage. 
on uh, Thomas, even though he lost a unit. Uh, it's interesting. I still feel like getting rid of those gargoyles this turn is a priority. Like, should should be a yeah. priority for him. Because af after this point, like, you're, yeah. you're, you're busy, right? Like, yeah. Well, after this point, there's no, you're not going to catch them ever again. Right. Right. They're gone. You need to focus on other things. Um, yeah. And that's, a, that's an easy point this. that you'll have. Yeah. You'll never get this close to them. They're going to go behind that building. And then mm -hmm. what, what are you going to, how are you going to reach them? Yeah, you'll, you'll have to like dedicate the soul snare to trying to snipe them on the last turn when they finally peek out to grab a token. Yeah, exactly. And then that's, Dream Life 9 is good, but you don't want it to be your only, your last ditch effort. Yep. Oh, interesting. So it looks like he's going to corkscrew Shobek down off the hill, potentially into the flank of one of these horsemen he units. He'll need a, an eight inch surge. I guess he can move and then. Move his six. He can't move his full six, but he's going to be. Left. He'll need a three inch surge. That's very doable on eight dice. Uh, yeah, but doesn't. He... So I guess he just got the monolith because the priest over here can't. Oh, four inch. Yeah. That's. Uh... And the. Uh... Okay. But I guess at this point. You think oh, interesting. He's in a bit of a bind. Yeah, and the Rev King does not have. Uh, surge. So it'll be just the monolith. Four, you need four successes. Four successes? That, Easy peasy. The assassin was, assassin was key there, disordering that cursed high yep. priest. Is... Yeah, I mean, that is a that is an interesting move, but it's going to be super risky because uh, that is a long surge. Uh, you know, and how much surge does the monolith have? Eight. Right. Yeah, so, I mean, like it's average dice, but dice don't like to be average when you need it. No, yeah. anything anything more than a one-inch surge is is super risky, in my opinion. And I think um, you and, still have to be within twenty-four inches of the mark, with him, which he just is. Yeah. I think he's trying to get it so that he only needs three. He's trying to angle it so he only needs three. Yeah, I don't know if he can. The the Shobik is uh, Shobik is more or less dead to rights after this turn, so it's not terribly risky. It's just unfortunate yeah. that this is even an option. I, I really would have liked the horsemen to just have stayed where they were. Oh, he's just taking them back in. Yeah, might have decided that it's too risky. Throw him out there and have him do nothing in what is probably his last turn on the board. He might try to take out Mikhail so that the Revenant King can have a little more free range. Yeah. If it were me, I think I would probably put Shobik and the Rev King into Mikhail. Try to kill him. Shobik could overrun and kill the Pegasus, while the Rev King could turn to face the um, the cavalry. Yes, the horses, yeah. And Interestingly, you... moving the Rev the Abyssal Horseman up, which was I thought was weird, prevents the Rev King from just sliding ten inches down to the other side of the building. Yeah, it, it does block that I up, but I don't know that that was a huge concern, though, just because it ends up kind of being two pieces against two pieces after that, and the horseman mm -hmm. can just shadow the the worm, turn to face wherever right. it goes. So the injured yeah. Revcav troop over here that's been getting shot at by the archers looks like they are going in on the uh, army stand of air with the Zephyr crown, hoping to overrun into the flank of this tall spear or the phalanx. I'm curious if he ended up... Um, no, he's taking it back. So it doesn't look like he would be hindered on that, but no. But even no, that, that's so. like what three wounds, maybe. That's not a great re-rollable eight. Or yeah, nine. not not great odds for the kill. Well, depends, I guess, if he backs it up with drain life, but it'll be tough to get the drain life into a position where he can see. Right, but if he does that, then he's he's letting those gargoyles go. Yeah, I think. Yeah, getting those rev cab into the back of those gargoyles is the best chance to get rid of the gargoyles you'll have. Because he could just reform within an inch. And then... Yeah. Let's try and get both in there. Both onto the standard pair? Yeah. I am a concern. I am also a confuse. 
I guess you could do that. I don't know if it's possible. I don't know if, don't know if he can do it without nimble. He would definitely have to put the other one in first. Yeah. Because he needs to turn to the facing of the standard bear, but he's not going to be able yeah, to turn it be... enough. Yeah, I don't think he'll be ahead of the front of the spears. And he'll, and if it, the rev cab will slide over, so. Oh no, they're going to be in the flank, so. Yeah. Yeah, they'll be in the flank. Um, so his front corner might, I don't know if it would break the front plane of the spears, even if he turns. Yeah, that's what he'd need to fit the other one in. He's trying it out. I'm not sure that's going to work out for him. So far, he's left Shobik where he is. Um, okay, so he hasn't really committed to any move yet this turn. He's still thinking about it. He's got he's got options, but this is a pretty critical turn. But if you think he almost has too many different options or different ways of going about it, and then it gets a little yeah. overwhelming, which might be why he's taking so long. Or he's yeah, not he taking a, a really long time. I shouldn't say that, but he needs to really weigh his options here. He has a lot of problems and not a lot of great solutions. Yeah. yeah, he's kind of getting to the point where he's got to force something in the middle with how the, the left side of the board is going. Yeah. And, yeah, and knowing that he's right. probably he's not going to be able to swing the right flank very easily with having to deal with those gargoyles, so he's got to kind of force the middle at this point. Yep. Like, even just like, moving one of those enslaved guardians a full six and just forcing a hindered charge from the spears or tempting a hindered charge from the spears. Yeah, because at that point, even even wind blast isn't going to push them back far enough to mm -hmm. kind of turn them uh, a charge the next turn. Yeah. Um, so over here on and the left, like that rev cab troop, you basically have to go into the farthest left abyssal horseman, right? You pretty much have to just get in their way. Well, can it reach the other one, the other unit, Good the other for, the other horseman yes. unit? Yeah, it's just it's in it. They could. Uh, it'd be in the front. Yeah, he has to. Okay. So take those over. Take take the uh, the rev king, rev king over. But he would have to be facing straight down. He wouldn't get a second pivot if he did that. No, if he goes ten, he can. He's he's flying. No, that was he moved twelve to get to get clear of the horseman. He has to go like eleven. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's what he's trying. So he'd have to go and just face down. Yeah, yeah. it's really not a great option just in general because if if uh, Thomas can get those. Horseman somewhere else. And Mikhail can always just go mm -hmm. shut that guy down. And with twelve attacks on threes, chances of being shut down are pretty high. Yeah, I mean, Mikhail will just kill. It. We'll just kill that guy after a couple turns. Yes. Mikhail's got to be one of the strongest special characters in the game. I don't think he's the. He's I don't think he's the best, like point for point best, but he's yeah. he's up there. He's priced accordingly, like a 260, like that's a hefty investment, but he does work. He's going to be useful in every game. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Speed 9, he'll, you can get pretty much wherever you need him. Yep. Mm -hmm. Fearless. You know, mighty. Dread. Dread is useful the, the no dread. matter what is on yeah. the board. The Dread yeah. is huge, especially for a character yeah. that wants to get up there and be fighting. He's going yeah. to be putting Dread on a few things at a time, usually. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, so if you're Chris, what do you what do you need to do on the left over here? You've got those two horseman units staring up at you. shobik has gone in; he's gotten kind of punched around, and you haven't really made a dent in anything yet. And you don't have a caster. Um, do you just keep trying to delay? Do you get in a position to force bad charges next turn? Do you, do you try to rescue Shobik at all, or do you just... I think you accept that Shobik is dead. Well, I think the only way to rescue Shobik is is the big gamble of trying to get that surge onto the, the horseman. I think that's just the best thing yeah. he, he could have done. That was like that was a gift that Thomas gave him. Yeah, true. A chance of getting Shobik in the flank is what you hope for in every game, or try to engineer. And then you throw one of the rapid cabs in front of those spears in the middle. You move both insane guardians as far as you can. Yeah, just really just kind of push everything at that point and get everything in. Yeah. They're, they're, he's like not being aggressive enough in the middle. 
And it looks like he is turning the Revcav regiment on the far right around. But he will be trying to surge them into the gargoyles. Is where he have them now? Is he clipping the corner and ending up in a flank? Or I mean, I guess it's probably not going to make a difference in gargoyles. You would want yeah. to have him, them facing more to the right so that the leader points in the flank. Or in the rear. Just... I think it's going to be a two-inch search. I think positionally, you, I think you would rather have them in the flank, to be honest. You, that puts the, the Cav Regiment in a better spot post-combat. Yeah, that's true. Closer to the middle. And I guess so they're only 810, so if you get them in the flank, you're, you're going to get Yeah, them. I was like, and then I was like, I don't think it makes a big difference if you're hitting them in the flank. or. The yeah, no, gargoyles are fragile enough that if you sneeze at them hard, they'll, they'll die. You know, yeah. sometimes yeah, gargoyles die to nothing but mind fog with no wounds on them. That's very true. Slide. It's funny because I always expect like picture gargoyles in my head is like cool stone. stone or something like very tough, but they are not in this game. Well, no, you're <laughs> at all. Yeah, they should be defense. Defense six, right? That's yeah, you're thinking of the cartoon. Six flying troops. Yes, I know. I'm thinking <laughs> of the cartoon. Okay. <laughs> they're they're less like gargoyles and more like harpies. I think. Oh man, I would, I would, I know some people don't like the um, non-straight fantasy themes, but uh, gargoyle heavy army that actually used miniatures that look like the cartoon gargoyles, I would love that. That would look so cool. I would fully support that. <laughs> mm -hmm. Any cartoon that has William Riker in it. There you go. And Worf. That's right. Mm -hmm. And Data. And Troy. Oh right, I didn't, I yeah. forgot that Data was in there. Yeah. yeah. Uh, didn't LeVar, Le, LeVar Burton do a voice for a couple of episodes? Too? I feel like everybody but Picard showed up on Gargoyles at some yeah. point. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah, I remember watching that as a kid, and like even my mom would watch it with me. She's like, I'm invested in this show. <laughs> it was a dramatic. really good show. I feel really like show. somebody has to have done some some 3D printable Gargoyles characters that you could find. You could probably get somebody with a resin well, printer like to make an army like that. There are so many of those like 80s cartoon minis that coming out now. So there's like the off, you know, not Transformers, Transformers. There's you know, right. all sorts of stuff. Backing up that cursed priest that got punched in the face by the assassin so that I guess he'll be hindered when he charges again next turn. Yeah. You can't do anything else useful this turn. He's sending. Is he going to be hindered? Oh, see, so this is a... make contact with it, touching the forest. This is another problem with them not angling those individuals properly, because the assassin should not be in their in their arc if he had arc. come in on the angle he was in. Yeah, now he should be turned. Yeah. Parallel to their. And the revcap are touching the forest to begin with, so they will be hindered where they should be hindered. I think they're just trying to, to just trying to establish shortest. Shortest yeah. distance to contact for facing and everything. Slide. Now they slide. That was interesting. That time they did remember to align him. So that, I think because it was the individual, like, individual on individual that they forgot yeah. it on. Yeah, it's easy to forget on, on individual. Because yeah. I think it gets like weird. People forget like who's supposed to to slide and who's supposed to turn to face when it's the individuals, but they're fairly good about it when they... Oh, <laughs> just kidding. Take it all nah, back. Never mind. Never mind. Just or maybe kidding. they just or maybe they just realized that, that the assassin was and the uh, first high priest were supposed to be turned a little bit. Maybe. Maybe. I don't know that that's the best use of that Revcap troop, though, at this point, too. I think he needs to throw them into the one of those horsemen regiments. Horsemen, to, yeah. By himself some time. I do like the idea of swinging one of those um, enslaved guardian hordes more towards that flank. I think he probably could push him forward more, though. Yeah, I don't. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I'm fine with backing that guy up because then that at least makes the assassin hindered next turn. Maybe you'll live. Maybe you won't. Um, but I or feel at least like yeah, a little more gamble. Yeah, but I feel like you, you you definitely should be throwing this this rev cap troop into the front of one of those horsemen. To cover the dragon doing something useful this turn. Um, then the dragon can at least get in position to see them without being threatened. Yeah. 
or that. I don't. Or since he's in the flank, you need to start going now. Okay. Interesting. No. So now there's there's no question that that would be hindered then because you turn your flank yeah. all the way into the woods to do that. But he would he would have to surge to require that much of a pivot. You pivot as the least amount possible. Yeah. Yeah, even to hit the flank, you don't need to pivot all the way around. I think maybe he's trying to figure out the best position for after resolution, but he won't. Yeah, I don't know. I don't. Uh, yeah, I'm not a fan of trying to punch the assassin with that that uh, red cap troop. I think there's there's better things to do with it. This turn means you're putting a lot more resources in just trying to keep your caster alive. The casters are pretty critical for EOD, but, but yeah. Yeah, but then everything. But then you're also leaving it so your dragon essentially essentially can do nothing. Yeah, but okay. since the since the rev cab will be in the flank, you're still not blocking line of sight to the assassin. Maybe maybe that's what he's trying to do is figure out how to block line of sight so he can't charge oh, him okay. next turn. Yeah. Sure. Okay, that makes sense. Charge him in a way that. I don't know if that's even the best you can't. move for the assassin. Anyways, I think now that in the position that the assassin is in, I'd rather go kill the soul snare. Yeah. Soul snare is warning. Sure. Yeah, so triple yeah. attacks. And you're fast enough Shutting to get there. down that drain life nine. Yeah. Go snare hunting. Hmm. And then he'll still be there and he can come back to the curse he's the if he's around. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's a tricky situation to be in, I feel like, because he doesn't have a great. He doesn't have a great option for approaching and dealing with those two horsemen regiments. No. Um, yeah, sending that one regiment in to deal with the shamblers really just threw threw away one of his big pieces on the flank. Yeah. And it ended up being an overcommitment throwing Shobik up there, like having Shobik back in line with the rev cab right now would make a big difference. Yeah, because Shobik could have hidden the um, cursed high priest from the assassin. He wouldn't have been able to see him. Mm -hmm. He was hiding behind him. Now we're just seeing the infinite spawns of rev cab troops. Right. He's like, what I need are more troops of rev cab. Right. So I shall create them from my necromancy. From some raised dead casts. Yeah, yeah casting raised dead. Oh man, if there was a spell that we could steal from a. Oh, interesting. So they're asking us. We're a bit unsure about where they end up here. What do you impartial guys think? One or two? Um, I think one. With the charge? Yeah, one. One. Yeah, I think one is closer, yeah. Yeah, because it's like you clip, it slides, and then you slide. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you pivot the least amount to make the right. attack. Right, so you right, so you you'd pivot the least amount. He would turn to face you, and then you would pick up and, and place to the center. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's what all these random hand gestures I were doing. Definitely, that's what I was explaining. Definitely, definitely, that's what we mean. But that, but that would block line of sight. So to the curse type priest, it would. Yep. And I feel like that's a. Um, you know, we we're talking about raised dead. I'm just there thinking, like, man, how much more broken would undead be if you could raise like regiments of zombies right in the middle of the battlefield during the game? Even if you could just ra raise units of zombies that had already died, right? Like, oh, okay. You know what? You did not need to hurt my feelings more with undead. Okay, that's enough out of you guys. <laughs> Mike and I are just trying to like help out an army that's in need. Yeah, desperately in need. Yes, yeah, so in need. That's enough out of you. <laughs> You're delusional. <laughs> Maybe a second war machine, so you could take more than three. <laughs> <laughs> the soul snare should really be an undead unit as well. Absolutely, everything that yeah. Empire of Dust has, undead should have. Should also have, right? 
but cheaper. Yeah. <laughs> I, I I'm of the opinion that the Empire of Dust stuff should be Empire of Dust, like zombies and I mean sorry, mummies and pharaohs should be Empire of Dust exclusives. Yeah, I kind of feel the same way. Yeah. Especially now that you have the um, options in the undead list, like the ghoul gas, I don't know that a flying pharaoh is really such a, a high value thing to take anymore. Yeah, I think the the gas and the vampire cover that, and they don't. Yeah, they they don't need a defense six hero. Right. Or if they do, like that's what Lady Alone is for, right? Like she should be exactly. the defense they, six hero. Yeah, they have that. Yeah. You have the option thing. Or it shouldn't be a pharaoh. It should be like a uh, some kind of wraith character. But I guess they yeah. already have the Lich King, which is basically a wraith character. Mm -hmm. But if you wanted to combat one, um, like yeah. what was it in uh, Warhammer? What was it like the Banshee or something like that? The individual? Oh, they had the White Lord. The White Lord, yeah. Which is kind of the Rev King, but he was a bit stronger, I think. Because they had the White Blade that could kill with one wound. Totally balanced. Old days. Totally balanced. You have a whole unit of the Grave Guard had them, so it's like if you wound on like a six or something like that. The, the uh, for killing blow, yeah. Unit just the, yeah. Things that made you. Then there's like the frost. <laughs> All right, He's given some good hard thought here. So he he tried a whole bunch of options with that Rev Cav troop on the upper left and. Hasn't actually moved them yet. Didn't like any of them. Uh, he has at least committed that, that RevCav regiment on the far right to turn around and kill those gargoyles and has sent the RevCav troop with three wounds into the army standard bear with his effort crown. Other than that, he's still thinking about what else he wants to do in the middle and over here on the left. Um, which, I mean, he's yeah, in kind, he, of a, kind of a tough situation. I think the YOLO charge of Shovik into the YOLO surge... I think that's a really strong play if he can get it to work. Like, that puts him in a decent position. I mean, in worst case scenario, if it, Shobik is probably going to die next turn anyways. So if you can get him in a position... So even if the Surge fails, it doesn't put you in much worse of a position than you already are in right now. Yeah. In if my he opinion. does, he gets his... He's at eight wounds, potentially with a dead a, a Abyssal Horseman unit. Yeah. And then he turns around. Mikael, like I think he rolled a little bit above average last time, so he does another six, eight wounds. Yeah. Is that 14? I would be uh, I would be trying to figure out what I could soul snare. If there was a nice soft target that you could do the drain line from the soul snare on and be sure that you were gonna get like yeah. four wounds to heal Shovik up, then I would worry about keeping yeah. Shovik around. I think he moved the soul yeah. snare back. He could have moved it up. Because right now it's 20 inches away from the Pegasus, which would have been a perfect target. Right, exactly. Yeah, but what I meant is with, with like Shobik too, though, is if he turned and did get the the surge off, that's amazing. But if the surge doesn't go, yeah. I mean, you're still, unless you can get that drain life, you're not in a, any worse position than you already are. Yeah. Uh, so it looks like he, he like has tried moving, moving the dragon back a little. Kind of into the yeah, position where we kind of wanted it in the first is. place. Yeah, yeah. If he doesn't get away from Mikael, he'll be dead in another turn or two anyway. Um, but you could at least put a bunch of wounds on something else and heal him up to make it, make it not, mm -hmm. you know, a snake eyes roll for Mikael when he mm -hmm. goes over there and hits him. Yeah. Okay, so he now he has he decided to get the, send. Uh, yeah, go ahead. Oh, he wanted the he moved the soul snare back to get it out of range of the Pegasus, but he could have moved it up to get in range of drain life in the Pegasus. I guess it's a bit of a. Right. Okay. So he's taking the hindered front charge with the rev calf troop onto the horseman boys. Yep, and he might be trying to just corkscrew Shobik into the other unit, or he might be trying his his surge charge. Uh, we'll see. But he did kind of move move the dragon back to a position where where we were saying earlier that we probably wanted it in in the first place, right? Like not flush with the building, yeah. looking yeah. at a, at more yeah. of an angle. Yeah, um, that would have been. Still Even strong flank protection, but you have a much better view of what's going on. Yeah. Yeah. 
first turn, if he had moved up just like two inches from that position, that would have been a lot more, mm -hmm. given him a lot more options. Yeah. And now he is looking at the flank of these horsemen that have the uh, rev cab troop in their front. Um, so if they don't kill them next turn, or if they die because Shobik goes into their flank, then... Uh, and even, what is it, I guess a, if he gets three inch, a three-inch surge, will he be out of the line, the arc of the right? Or two, yeah, he'd need a three-inch surge to get out of arc of the right least horseman. Yeah, which, yeah, which, which also puts him in contact, so yeah, at that yeah. point. So basically, All if right. he rolls with... All right, let's see it. Big hero surge from the monolith. Oh, oh that's three. 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 I think three gets it. You might have needed a four. You might need a four. Let's see. No, no I think I... three gets it. Three touches the... Oh, no. No. Oh, oh no. Oh, my God. And he's... Oh, in, my God. And he's still in... It, I think he's, he's just still eclipsed the corner. Barely clipping the yeah. corner there. Oh, my goodness. My kingdom for a surge oh. from anywhere. This is what so we like said. You like, you can't hope for average when you need average. That's why I only do two inch, two inch or less surges. <laughs> right. <laughs> One inch surge or nothing. Uh, okay, so he's yeah, going to drain life from the soul snare onto the assassin. Mm -hmm. um, I guess he'd heal, oh, heal back the cursed high priest. Yep, so just swaps the wounds around between the cursed high priest and the assassin. Um, but I guess Shobik is now too far away for it to uh, heal him. Um, that's very unfortunate. Yep. No, it was kind of a risky move. Um, and then, you know, though, I lost the game once on a surge where, like, they took the unit and they ran and they surged. They needed to get on that token in the bottom of six. And I think he needed, like, it was, like, ten surge and he needed, like, an eight to get there. And, of course, he rolled the eight to get there. So, like... It only works when it's against you. It never works when you need it. Right. All right, so here's the surge from the on the uh, Revcav regiment into the flank of the Garbos. Let's see it. Really just needs one gets three there. Three Once successes again. again. Three success on eight dice, just three successes, yeah. Yeah. Um, but that should that should take care of his gargoyle problem at least. <laughs> and then when it makes he it sound like we have like a infestation. That's right, a, 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 <laughs> our, our gargoyle infestation. I have a gargoyle infestation. Actually, I don't think we do. We have like one unit. This is not like spammed. So, well, you know, if there's if there's one you see, there's like four or five you don't see. Yeah, well, like we saw earlier with the extra Ravcav troops coming up. Right, they just pop up out of the ground. Um, so that should that should pretty handily take care of those gargoyles, unless uh, we're like a snake eyes pops up out of nowhere, which would be really really unfortunate for Chris at this yeah. point. And how do we right um, now? Go ahead. Oh, sorry. I was gonna say right now, it's not terrible. I guess they still would be able to move twenty and get out of line of sight. I was gonna say it's not doesn't put the rev cab in an immediate danger, but it does let the gargoyles escape. Right. If he did roll. All right. Check check to see if he can get rid of that assassin on a lucky nerve roll. Ten. Oh. No. Oh. Oh, re roll for a four. That assassin yeah, is not the, inspiring natively. I think he has the. So item. where's he gave, he gave him the talisman. Yeah, he just. Oh, yeah. okay, that makes sense. So super lucky. Uh, Eleven thirteen. He would have been dead on the first roll. Um, yeah. But does not get him. But he did at least heal the priest, and the priest is now in the woods. Mm -hmm. So probably um, okay. Which which probably means the soul snare is definitely the better target for the assassin next turn. Mm -hmm. uh, that's an option, right. and also uh, grounding the Rev King is an option. Yep. Mm -hmm. I think the Soul Snare is probably the Actually, best target. Really... Rev Cav in the flank will do 11 wounds, which puts the Gargoyles on Snakes once. Oh. And not Snakes. No, no Snakes. <laughs> no Snakes. And I feel like that's pretty significant because if those gargoyles had gotten away this turn, that's that's definitely a point that Thomas would have later in the game that yeah, uh, Chris would not have tricky. any answer for. All right, Revcav Troop into the Army Standard Bearer with the Zephyr Crown. Which hits not great damage. Should be looking on twos for damage, I think, right? 
Yeah. Yeah. I think so. Yeah, so still four. still four. Um, Got one life leech. So what's that? Nine twice. Nope. I won't do it. Yep, it is ten twelve. That is just a nine. Where's the guy with dread when you need him? Drat. 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 Uh, so they will not be overrunning into the flank of those tall spears. I think that might be it for the turn here. Oh, no, there's the rev cap troop. On the oh, yeah, the rev cap troop. Yeah, the hindered rev cap troop. Oh, wow. Still gets four hits and two wounds, looks like, because they uh, would have lost one thunder or something. Being yep. hindered. Um, probably needs boxcars here, a seven. Yeah, we'll unless someone won't do that. that. They've, they've got three the anyway, so it really doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah that's true. Yeah. That's true. Because even though they're called prone bound, they are basically still abyssal horsemen. Yeah, if he All grounds the come dragon, with. Mikhail could run up behind that. They're such a great unit, those Chrome Battle Abyssal Horsemen. Yeah. We have Aren't the regen back up with the Drain Life. Then. Yeah, and them being Chrome Bound, so they can get regen from 18, or Drain Life from 18 inches from uh, the yeah. Chrome. Yeah. So good. Like, they have slightly low nerve, like 14, 16 is not great, but the fact that they're going to get a lot of wounds back once they enter combat. It's huge. Yeah, and without, I mean, there's there's not a whole lot of shooting that's going to threaten them too, yeah. too much, so yeah. in yeah. 1 in 20 games, they get wavered early, but otherwise, they're practically fearless because they'll just be fighting. Mm -hmm. Right, and they have regen, so they're they're fine once they start getting shot at. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. As long as, so long as somebody doesn't, like, double down with a couple shooting units and waver them in the first two turns before they get into combat, they're, they're workhorses. Yeah, yeah. And that's, I mean, that's rare. It's rare that you bring enough shooting to just do a bunch of wounds to death five early, unless you're facing right. orange and spam. Yeah. And, I'm, and when I, uh, when I played Abyssal, that's what and Butcher, I loved, right. Answer for. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like when, when I was playing Abyssal, like I would put a unit of uh, Hellhounds or something in front of them to provide cover mm -hmm. um, while they're moving up the table. So sure, you can shoot them if you want, but you're better off trying to shoot the dogs to death out of the way. Mm -hmm. Um, but by then they're they're in position to charge you on the next turn. Yeah, so, butcher yeah. regiments. They're not quite as wide as the horsemen, so you got to be trick. You got to be careful with positioning. But the stealthy death, death five dash fifteen chaff is a good war machine counter and shooting yep. counter in general. <laughs> Definitely. Uh, so Thomas has asked to take a quick break. He's probably running to the restroom or something. Um, I really like the options you get with Twilight Kin. Yeah, the like his, uh, his allies kind of give you that kind of evil Wood Elf feel. It's, I, I dig it. They have a they have a really strong list. I think the the um, I've I've played them a little bit, and I there's some people locally that play them. And what people have seemed to have the most trouble with is is unlocks. Um, mm -hmm. Is actually getting enough unlocks to. Use a lot of the fun Night Stalker stuff, but I mean, this as this list demonstrates, you really don't don't need it. You can run it as, I mean, this is practically an elf list. It's just you get the benefit of the assassin and Mikhail. It's all the characters, the Twilight King characters that you. The reason you think this is Twilight King is elves. Yeah, some cavalry with special rules as opposed to just speed nine elite guys like the Fury and Regen. I think is especially when you have access to gar gargoyles as chaff. Mm -hmm. I'll take that over speed nine well even even without those other special rules just converting one of those points of tc to crushing is huge yeah yeah if you can ever take like crushing over thunderous i'm taking the crushing for sure yeah yeah absolutely uh no no regions <laughs> rolled on that uh unit of force with two wounds and the unwounded one definitely took that flight charge on shobik that uh yeah. ended up being offered there because it's my shot by one. right so, so now, Shame. like, you definitely don't have to commit Mikael to polishing off Shobik. Uh, can he get to that dragon? Yeah, that would be a big mistake if he left that dragon in range. 15, 18, 19. No, I don't think he can. I think he's just he's that fast. Is he? Just out of the, I think he moved him just out of the Pegasus and Mikael. He's but out of Mikael. Is in. Oh, I don't know. The Pegasus might. I think the Pegasus can still just barely get him. 
Yeah, but also could the Pegasus not just fly like straight 20 and be like totally out of everyone's arc and going for objectives and getting in position? Uh, the Pegasus could just, go... could just turn and trade life at them. I think you put the, um, the Pegasus into the High Priest in the Woods. Ooh, yeah. Pathfinder. That's also a good point. Got yeah. Pathfinder, yeah. yeah. That's a good one. And then, so, and then the, the, the assassin into the Soul Snare. Deal with the Soul Snare. Go, go kill yeah. the Soul Snare. And just don't worry about the dragon, because soul... you'll you'll have two uninjured units of cavalry basically over here to stare it down. And, and Mikael. Mikael just waiting to mm -hmm. jump it. Yeah. yeah, I think you put Mikael, Mikael just sitting there lipping it, lipping their chops, just being like, "Feed me some dragon for dinner, boys." I don't know why I switched accents yeah. there. Because <laughs> like, you, like, like the, Cajun you only have on fours, <laughs> so it's not. <laughs> Could you do like uh well well now if this is supposed to be like an evil wood elf forest thing, could you do like a swamp version of Twilight Kin? Ooh, oh, that'd be oh. fun. So the, the swamp army like, that I've always wanted to do is um Swamp EOD and do like kind of a voodoo theme with their with their like infantry. Yes. And then do um their chariots. I want to do like um fan boats for their chariots. Uh that'd be hot. We have um so we really, have swamp ogres. Really wet undead. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Uh, a friend of mine back in the day did like a uh, almost like a, a Pacific Island uh, undead themed list. I think I think maybe there was like a, a zombie pirate or vampire pirate themed list that's, that floated around the internet for a while. Um, and so it was guys with, with like the big kind of tiki masks on them and spears and shields and stuff oh, like nice. that. Kind of like a kind of like a Polynesian undead thing and, and pirate themed thing. It was pretty cool looking. Yeah, it sounds like it would really come cool. up pretty cool. Yeah, Man and Brindley's. Yeah, we have our, our swamp use. ogres, and we have like, like you, on our display board, we have like the Shrek outhouse, <laughs> and like the keep out sign. It's very fun. Our Shrek ogres. I think there's a lot of things people can do that are really creative. Like I love um, Scott's in the on the West Coast. His amazing pirate. I think it's Kingdoms of Men. Yeah, that oh, Scott, was Scott Holcomb. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah, like everyone's yeah, on boats great. and yeah, beautifully done. There are some yeah. very, very creative people in this community. Yeah, and that's sort of the thing. Like, I f I feel like um, people who sit down and they're like, I'm going to try to get the best paint score I can get. Like, there's there's one approach to that. Um, but then people who are like, I'm going to try to win player's choice. Um, yeah. And when you decide that, like, that's my goal and I'm going to commit to that you kind of go a very different direction in your modeling and painting choices than someone who's trying for the very uh, technical, precise, clean kind of, kind of painting award. Mm -hmm. uh, because when, when you want player's choice, like you want to go big, you want to go big on theme. Yeah. You want to go big on your display board. You want to go big on your base decorations. Uh, and you Something end up with these catching. big, yeah, big, big spectacles that people are going to see from all the way across the hall. Um, and like, those are the armies that you go to, to look at. I think more than more than the um, the best painted armies because those I almost want them to like okay put your models in a light box and take close up pictures and I'll look at them um, and I'll spend a lot of time looking at them but I, I feel like in person you want to like you want the full experience of like the 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 fog machine and the music that plays and the lights that flash and like the you know all that kind of crazy shit. We had a we had a really cool one um, locally. Um, one of the guys here in Austin, John Hogue, he plays uh, Night Stalkers, but it's all like evil carnival themed. So a lot of his units were like clowns. He had uh, shadow hounds that were like bumper cars. Nice. Um, his his doppelgangers were um, like one was clowns going through like a funhouse with like a plexiglass maze that he set up on the actual regiment base. Um, and he had like cool. carnival rides on all of his units. It was really really well done. Uh, I love it. That's, cool. That's awesome. When, when I am actually motivated and hobby at some point in my life, we'll see if it ever happens. Um, I want to do like a full Candyland kind of like, but like dark Candyland themed like Kingdoms of Men or Goblins or something like that. Um, yeah. I think it'd be really fun. Especially if I did Goblins and I want them like, you know, like gumdrops like growing out of people. It'd be so fun. I have no talent whatsoever, so it'll probably never happen. Don't take my ideas, internet. <laughs> <laughs> Just commission Ron Ritchie to do it for you. 
Well, Ron already, because we're playing our summer campaign. So Ron, Richie, um, and I played one of our campaign games, and he just raided my supply train and stole all my candy, which is actually drugs. So he's going to be addicted <laughs> to the candy now. Yeah, you could, you, you, you could commission him to do it, but, but he would be like, I'll do it if the army's goblins. Um, yeah, see, I did yeah. like the idea of goblins, but <laughs> then I have to paint like yeah. a zillion of them. Yeah. It's the price we pay. Price we pay. Um, all right, so he's he's kind of done what we expected him to do with his cab over here on the left. He's charged Shobik in the flank. He's countercharged um, the rev cab in the front, and now he's trying to figure out how to get his tall spears into that rev cab troop that charged his uh, army standard bear. I think he um, other tried than to that, position standard bear so he would slide as far. Because right now, if he doesn't break those rev cab, he's got a flank from the slave guardians. Yeah. So. Yeah, which you don't want because it doesn't really have anything there to support them. Like he could turn those um, impalers back around, or I guess he could turn the tree herder. Yeah, I think the tree herder at this point probably turns toward the middle. Yeah. All, the, all that should be left over on the left is that, that worm. But I do think that Mikhail needs spearmen. to help out. Mikhail probably needs yeah. to help out on that on that troop of Revcav because that's not a guarantee that the horsemen pick them up. No. Yeah, not, not having lost one. They're crushing chaff. one right now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Stupid thick chaff. So that's only like six mm -hmm. wounds. Yeah, so yeah, and if he's moving his uh, prone over possibly to help out the tall spears with drain life, and he's not going to have drain life to help out. Yeah. Those tall spears are hitting on fives because they're hindered. So fives and fours. Yeah, That's exactly. Like five wounds, six wounds with the lead. Yeah. And, but since since the red cab are tall, you can't easily see over them to drain yeah. life them. So yeah. Drain life That's nine right. will help quite a bit. Will we'll definitely help, you. Yeah. It's a It's a... Not likely to do a whole lot in any case, but what do you think you do with these archers? Maybe take some shots at the cursed high priest, try to get a lucky waiver or something. I don't know. Like they oh, are you can waiver idea. those. Those are those are those are also fearless. Oh, they're yeah. fearless. Mm -hmm. I, thought the, I thought the high priest might be yeah. waiverable, but I guess not. Do you like no, dash thirteen? Do you yeah. try and shoot, or do you just accept your sadness and uselessness? Do they have twelve to just charge the high priest? That's not a great option either. But like, I think don't. maybe are they out just there? Yeah, they're out. Yeah, they don't really have anything to do since yeah, they since they burned the token and uh, didn't sucker any cavalry into the forest to charge them. Like, they can stand there and try to put some flank damage on stuff, but they can't really they can't really get in the way of any of the rev cab to keep them off of the all spears for another yeah. turn. So earlier yeah, in the game, only go six. if they can go. Sorry. Go ahead. I was gonna ask earlier so when they burnt that token token so early, but we were talking about how if the Rev Cav regiment had come in, they would have had issues with um, unit strength to hold that token if they wanted to burn it. If they'd sidestepped to the left, wouldn't that have put the charge so that the unit would have been so far over that you the the regiment of elves could have actually held the token and the opposing unit wouldn't have been able to? So you would have maybe been able to take another turn to draw them in. Then burn the token. You, if they sized up, they probably they would have had to size up to the to the right. The right, I yes. mean the right, not the but left. That would have. I think they still might have been able to get a surge flank that way because they're pretty close. They're like maybe nine or ten inches away at that point, so they could. Oh, okay. I do and still think it would be better. That, that, yeah. Because I feel like if now you have no them. reason. Like why? Why even make those? They don't have a really big role to play anymore. They've kind of lost their. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think they, they've done live. their job, though. For for hmm. the points investment in them, I feel like they've done their job to this point. Yeah, a troop of gargoyles and the archers slowed down. Like, those rev cab aren't going to get involved in the middle until turn four or five now. So that's, that's yeah. important. Well, I'm not saying they didn't play their role. I'm saying, but what kind of role did they get to play now for the last three turns? Potentially slowing down well, the rev cab moving into the middle because you know if you you have to say okay it's not going to do much but I'm, i might have to let these archers charge the flank of those rev cab at some point if i'm pushing them into the middle and then they're going to at the very least yeah. be coming in to support without thunderous all right it looks like uh 
he has decided to send the Pegasus into the first high priest in the woods and the assassin into the soul snare like we suspected. So now it's kind of just a question of what do you do with Mikael? Do you okay? Yeah. Good. You send him into the flank of the uh, ref cap yeah. to help out, just like the, yeah. just like we wanted you to. That's where he's got to be, especially with the control bubble too. I like yeah. that all these decisions were made, and we like thought them all up at the beginning of the turn, and now they're like, "Oh look, they're happening now." <laughs> yeah, because I think putting Mikael up there, like that Rev King is. He's more of a flying anvil than a really, really big threat. Like, if he can't get a flank, he's not going to take anything out. Yeah. And he put Aegis on him, so he's clearly not expecting him to do damage. He's, he's expecting yeah. him to live yeah. and grind. He's just he's just a mobile grinding out anvil. And that's just that's the big problem that Mikhail gives armies that they just don't usually have to worry about is that he can't just go be an anvil because if he's anywhere near Mikhail, Mikhail just neutralizes that whole aspect of him. Right. Yeah. All right. Looks like maybe... Oh, you're, you're an anvil? That's cute. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like now he's turning his tree man over towards the center. Yeah, yeah. Now it's time for him to go help out against those enslaved guardians. Mm -hmm. Yeah, those horsemen have that left flank nicely secured. Pardon? I guess the one... The horsemen have the left secured, but I guess next turn... He could fly the Rev King over just to burn that left center token. That one? Yeah. yeah. Mm. Depends on where the where the horsemen reform, because you don't want to fly over there if one of the horsemen yeah. is looking at that spot. Cause... That's true. I forget, are there any limitations for Salt the Earth as far as when and how many tokens you can get rid of? Uh, the center one has to stay. Center one has but you can start burning at the end of turn one. So yeah, yeah. You can and, and throughout, throughout the whole rest of the game, it doesn't like. Turn I mean, off. you can even like land on all of them and burn them all, like in one turn. Yeah, if no, you, you can magically you can get, get on all of want. them, but you get no points for ones that are destroyed, and only the middle one can't be destroyed. So I, I really enjoy Salt the Earth because there's that added element of like, before turn one, you can kind of look at the board and say, okay, which tokens am I playing for and which ones am I going to destroy? And it may be something totally different than what your opponent is going to do. So right. like, you're not really looking at the same map almost um, right. once the game starts. Like, and I think also that adds to the, once you realize you might not be able to hold it anymore, you have that aspect of just like denying your opponent as well, um, mm -hmm. which is an interesting thing as well. Yeah. There's, there's not, are there, are there any other scenarios in Kings of War that have that kind of asymmetric Set up almost. No. I think there's no other there's no other one where you really burn the same way, right? Like I mean there's rays, but that's you're burning to get the points. To get so. them, yeah. And other and and you can't burn the ones on your side, so it's a slightly different yeah. dynamic. Yeah. So you can only contest, so it's it's very much about getting on your opponent's half. Yeah, I like I like both of those. I think those are my two favorite scenarios just because the objective changes throughout the game. You're not just like looking at some some static goal and then just kind of playing kill until the last couple turns. So you continually have to at least like consider the scenario mm -hmm. to some so extent. Looks like the uh, Pegasus whiffed on the uh, Cursed High Priest. Oof. Oh. Ouch. The, curse, the, the high priest, oh, they, wait, they do have the drain life. Mm -hmm. So at least there's a, th a threatening thing they can do. We're seeing the assassin, on the other hand. Uh, Did two wounds? Four wounds? Oh, four, eight, four, eight, four. Looks like he probably four popped the, the stream shard. He did not do a great job with that attack. Nerf for the soul snare. Eight? Twelve? That's a dash fifteen. Yeah. That's fine. But no next drain life from him, right? So Yeah. But it's an extra turn that the assassin will have to spend. Yeah. Uh, so here's the six. Oof. Seven hits. And only Four, two wounds. Thick. Thick chaff lives nope. again. Eight. Nope. Eight and six, six is fourteen. Dies. 
Just kidding. Jokes. Right on it. I was just baiting you with my jokes. Yeah, that is that is a load off his mind right there. Yeah. Um, yeah, that would have been terrible. <laughs> yeah, because uh, yeah, if he'd been stuck there, then he'd be getting these rev cav and the enslaved guardians with brutal in his flank. Mm. Even uh, in there, that's a problem. To yeah. face, he just isn't even in range anymore to charge with the enslaved guardians without a surge or yeah. without a few surges, probably. Huge. Yeah. Oh yeah. And you can you can send a rev cab troop in, but they got failing, so. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And the other one's too far to get in. Yep. And I did see, yeah, like, in the movement phase, they did decide to back up the archers, so they're behind the forest now. They can't see anything. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So they're kind of out of the game like at this point. Like, what are they going to do? But wait for the cab to run past and then try to make it through the forest and get to that token on if the right? If they stayed the in the ends? forest, they were a target for the rev cab, though. So the rev cab could have moved faster than they would normally have. But also, they moved back quite far. They really only had to go back like an inch. To, they went quite a bit farther than I kind of expected, yeah. if you're going to back up. Uh, so down goes Shobik over there on the left. Um, also shocking. A, a roll of 12 and then a roll of 3. Uh, very close to Snake Eyes there, which is pretty much the only way Shobik was going to live, is if he'd rolled Snake Eyes. Um, and now the disordered cav into the rev cav. Seven. It's seven okay. wounds. Puts him on a seven, but I guess there's still Mikael in the flank. Yeah, don't forget Mikael. We will certainly hit with all six so attacks. Six six. Ah. Just, just Mikael things. So five, like five, five more damage. So. Yeah, no then went from a and seven to, break to a snake eyes. Yep. Yeah. And they are not inspired, probably. Is the king too far away? Yep, king's too far away, so that takes good out. <laughs> they, I did. Mikael's clutch. Let's see. I think Mikael probably sidesteps like up and to the right. That's so he's kind of down and out of the way. Mm-hmm. Just so if he does get. I don't know. You might overrun him forward. Yeah, I think uh, I might throw him just, forward. Just leave him there. Yeah. All right. It's like, come and get him. Like, nothing. Like, the Drive King can't threaten any of those things. Really? All right, going into top of turn four. Thomas now has more scoring units left on the table than Chris does. But it is Chris's turn. So what does he do to get things moving back in his favor at this point? Because Mikael is threatening the dragon, so you can't just leave him there. Right? He's too close. Six, nine, 12, 14 inches away. Yeah. And if he tries to go after that middle token, like someone suggested as a burning, you're going to just get double charged. So yep. none of them. Yeah, because they're, both... yeah, they're both in position yeah, now. So that, that that left flank has been very well covered by those horsemen. All the while, they've been holding onto that token as well. Do you start just try to get points and move the Rev King behind the forest? Go back and get your tokens. Go 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 back and burn one of those tokens before the Pegasus comes back and gets it. Yeah. You just send the ref to oh, yeah. Pegasus mm-hmm. duty. Yep. Screw this. I'm out of here. And that way the Pegasus can't burn it next turn. Yeah. If he and survives the, the drain life. That kind of just gives that um token next to the hill to the injured horseman unit though. Yes, it does. Yeah. So, 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 what do you do here? If the do you as the fresh horseman, all the way down here, just burn, burn that one. Don't worry about it, and just move your line forward to come up around here. No, I, I, I think at this point that's just a point in the bank. Uh, those those horsemen have killed some things. They've done work. I mean, they just killed Shobik. Probably just uh, take just a chill. break, leave them there, yeah. tie up the horses, I mean, and have a drink. Yeah, they can stay within three, hang out by that token, and worst case scenario. You, um, if you have to go in somewhere else, you can abandon it because also the other thing is like there's not much that's going to go over there and burn it if you have to step off it at the like in the last turn. Yeah, yeah. And next I guess, turn you just pivot them so that their leader points on the hill so that they can threaten the middle, but they can back up. They can back up yeah. Yeah. Exactly. And I guess I guess you you can basically shift your whole center here to the left towards the token along the hill, right? Just slide the tree man over, slide the infantry over, slide the infantry over. Bring, bring the horsemen around to be in the flank. Hold, hold two objectives. 
And the center this one is, is only where... worth two points for bonus points, not for not for the scenario. Not, for, not scenario. for the scenario points, right? Yeah. Just yeah. to clarify for everyone. This is it's where just, like just not being to... more aggressive with those enslaved guardians is really gonna hurt. Because like he should be further up the board than those. Yeah, I feel like them it, it being now turn four and them having not seen combat yet is is only good for the Twilight Kid, right? Yeah. Well now it's like he could, he could send a horseman regiment in with the impalers, and that's going to take one out. Yeah, because, I mean, he's he's lost the flank that he planned to lose, and he's won the flank that he probably should have won but was kind of in contention, and kind of and sort of nothing has happened in the middle. So, so I feel like he's in pretty strong position. I also um, feel like Thomas is in a good place also with him taking second, which was a little bit of like a controversial move maybe like a lot of people are very pro first especially in this scenario and it's not looking to be a disadvantage for him even this far into the game like him having the bottom of six might be really nice mm -hmm. apparently i mike didn't like my opinion he left <laughs> <laughs> you're talking too much am i no my job here is to say dumb things and then you guys look extra smart when you correct them Contrast. Contrast. Yeah. Though there is no contrast between me and the color of my wall, apparently. I just realized I need to go in the sun. <laughs> I'm going to hurt someone's eyes. So, High Priestess yeah. is going to hide out behind the Soul Snare? Yeah, I think that way the Assassin can't get it, and then the Pegasus the still can. Yeah, the Pegasus is is still on the flank there. So yeah, and the peg, but though then again, we've seen that the Pegasus doesn't really isn't a huge threat necessarily. Yeah, three attacks is is tricky to use. Yeah, but he can also. Just kidding. Drain Life Seven has the chance. It's uninspired right now. I think. I don't think the assassin is close enough. Or maybe it is. Mike's not here maybe. to click the buttons and do the things, so. Yeah. If the assassin is, if it's inspired by the assassin, then it's a little tougher. But Drain Life 7, even just like two or three wounds. I yeah, because they're only 10, 10 12. 12, right? Yeah. I should know this. I play with Pegasus. Yes, they're 10, 12. Well, I play with Hero on Pegasus, so they're not quite the same thing. Oh, look, Mike has forgiven me. He has returned. <laughs> All right. Uh, so we have this match going on now. Um, starting in about 45 minutes, we also have Ray Shields versus Ben Johnson, which is a, a Trident Realm mirror match, which will probably determine which of them ends up being the top Trident Realm player. Fish fight. Uh, fish fight, yep. King of the Sea. Who is the Trident King? Who is the real Trident King? Throw out some little mermaid jokes. It writes itself. Um, later on Here this we evening, have trees throwing assassins there. They just have fish smacking each other right. in the face. Yeah. I feel like it should have been on Friday for Fish Fish by Friday. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been good. Uh, later this evening, I think we're going to have enough people available to do my match versus uh, Andrew Goodman from Australia. Which should be super interesting because uh, we're playing a scenario that I've never played, with a list that I just made and have not tested. So it'll be it'll be fine. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. Just gonna get He's only he's only the Australian master. He's only the Australian master. Is he the Australian master or did he win Clash of Kings? Oh, I think Trace the Australian master. I think I think Trace is the Australian master. He won the last Australian Clash of Kings. Clash of Kings. Either way. Neither of those are accolades that I can claim, so <clears throat> we'll see. Uh, it'll be fine. I'm just going to keep saying to myself, it'll be fine. Uh, and then, You're of course, tomorrow... As long as you play Undead, everything's fine. It's easy, right. yeah, button, no, I'm, apparently. So. I'm definitely playing Undead, so I'll just press the easy button. <laughs> just yeah. move forward. It, it get... just autopilots. Yeah, Morgoth just, just auto-wins the game, even though he's nerfed. He's still awesome. It's no big deal. Um, and then, of course, tomorrow we have, uh, we have the main event. Uh, we have Tom Robinson versus Mark Campbell on the top table. 
uh, at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 6 p.m. British Standard Time. That's right. American. I'm totally not going to be biased on the stream at all. No. Well, that's that's why we made sure to get uh, you know one one Canadian and one Brit uh, to commentate, and then and then two Americans to uh, remain somewhat neutral. Um, so it's Remember, not totally lost. So that the Americans are represented in the top top five, right? Are we? Do we still have somebody in the top five? No, that's what the commentators give you some representation. Oh, exactly. That's right. Because because otherwise we kind of don't have it. <laughs> Let me see. Uh, yeah, because because Ryan lost, and Kyle lost. Um, so it's down to me or maybe Ray. If one of us manages, oh no, Ray's Canadian. Never mind. Yeah, it's like Ray Shields is ours too. Yeah, okay, don't claim him. He's ours. Yeah, he's ours. <laughs> He's in my club, though. He lived in Maryland for a while. Yeah, and I'm in a club That's in fair. the States, but I'm me and actually Mark Campbell are both part of New, New, the New England Workings. The Northeast. So. Um, yeah. Northeast Workings. Yeah. Northeast Workings now, yes, because we've joined. We could. Uh, okay. Well, I was, I was about to say then we could we could at least maybe claim that, that we're the highest finishing American That's club, but if Alex is in Workings, then Workings will probably be the highest finishing. Oh, no, Mark I'm, is. I'm, I'm, Mark is. Oh, and Mark as well. Mark is. Mark is. Yeah, Alex isn't. No. Oh, okay. Alex doesn't want to play with us. All right. I'm going to keep looking until I can find a superlative that applies to this person <laughs> somehow. In these results. That's you, basically you, going to be what the wrap up show for this tournament is. Is you know the tos are going to be trying to give people awards, and I'm going to be like, let's talk more about me and how well I think I did in this tournament. Yeah. Hey, That's all I got to say is then. your your gift box, your care packages for your tournament look dope. I've seen pictures. Yeah. So well done. <clears throat> Yeah, hopefully yours will get through customs before next Friday. <coughs> this is what I was saying to Brindley. I'm like, we'll see if yours shows up before. Let's see, we didn't uh, we didn't reserve any budget for bribing customs agents, so you know they they arrive when they arrive. Um, yeah, I, I will say this: like cross borders a little faster now than it was a couple months ago. Probably, yeah. Um, yeah, it didn't. I didn't. I didn't quite think all the way through the whole like it's an international tournament, and I told people anybody that signed up, I would send it. So the first couple of Brits that signed up were like, "Did you really mean you'd send it to anyone who signed up?" And I'm like, "Yeah, sure, fine, no big deal." And like the next five signups are from Spain, and I'm like, "Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, hmm. All right, we'll make good on it, but uh, maybe this is the last time we do this, just completely open ended like that." Yeah. Um, interesting. So it looks like he's moved his cursed high priest to hide behind the soul snare. Yeah, they were, he was trying to figure it out earlier. When you abandon this. Sorry. I'm just kidding. I leave the stream like five times to go to the bathroom. So, so that's because this is my third coffee of the day. So, oops. Sure. Uh, it looks like the, the other cursed high priest is out of line of sight of either of his units over here on the right, and he's moved the rev cab down off the hill to threaten the flank of the tall spears. Mm -hmm. uh, three, six, nine, and oh, look, this. he's finally moving up the enslaved guardians. Yeah, he really needs to move them up. A little up bit. More, really, yeah. Just a little bit. Yeah. He really needs to move them up enough so that even if they get wind blasted, they could still charge something next turn. Yeah. Unless he's just he's just really, really, really into holding the center objective, in which case, like, he still needs yeah, to sign up. He's just being very patient. I guess he has. He could have the right middle and the right one <coughs> locked, locked up. Yeah. Because yeah. any, even a double charge from the tree herder and impalers will have trouble taking out enslaved guardians in one go. Yeah, and impalers aren't. No, they have staying stone. I was about to say. I know the tree herder is. Strider, so he doesn't care about the pond, but I don't think any of the rest of his units over here have. And those have impalers, fun. 14, 16, with defense four, they could melt to a counter charge. Yeah. That's like 10 wounds. That's not a terrible nerf roll. Yeah, no, you can't move those. Can't move that that regiment too far up because if you do, you'll be within range of the tall spears. Although, into tall spears coming off the fence like that, running all the way over there, I don't know that puts them in a great position because then if you don't break them, you're going to get recharged by guardian brutes. Yeah, it's like almost or slave like guardians. You just want that bait there. These fives yeah. and fours, 
again, it's like you're going to do like five moves. Right. And your and your priest is there, so they're inspired. Like, yeah, you almost kind of want that. You want to force the issue. But I guess if he moves up too much, then he won't be in their flank, and that's he still wants to be able to flank them next turn. I would imagine. But if you're closer, that makes the flank surge a lot easier, too. Uh, that's true. That's true. He might be trying to uh, finagle them into a surge so they don't uh, they don't get hindered going through the forest to get there. And he's got his priest there, so we could easily position him to keep them out. He might not need to surge. Uh, I think he's in range now. But yeah, I guess. Yeah, you're right. Oh, is he? He's yielding though. He'll just go right through it. Oh yeah, you go right through it. Yeah, and he's not not close enough to box you out at the end position, so you wouldn't have to avoid him. Okay, yeah, so the surge might be the better thing to do. All right, looks like he's doing some drain life on the assassin from the Cursed High Priest. Can he do that? How tall is the soul snare? Or the, or the Pegasus. Did he miss? I too. Okay. Oh, no successes on drain life on the tall spears, it looks like. From the Cursed High Priest down oh, there by the oh. forest. That's not good. And are there any yeah. combats? Nerve on the, uh, I guess they're disengaged there. And a five, that'll make a nine on the assassin. That won't be enough to do anything to him. Yeah, no combats. Interesting. Interesting. It's also so interesting that, like, in a lot of our matches by like turn four or something, we have like one part of the map where we kind of end up zooming in just to watch like what's going on because like the rest of it's kind of been abandoned. But this has been a very well spread out game. Yeah. And shockingly enough, the uh, revenant has uh, killed, burned the back objective on the upper left field. Yep, as we kind of expected. So, so on this turn, um. Chris basically abandoned the left flank and pushed up on the right flank, and that's about it. Were you about to see a spin to win where both we end up just fighting sideways? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. But he is in decent position to hold two objectives, and he's mm -hmm. burned one, so now Thomas will have trouble getting more than two objectives, right? Because he can, he can get the one that the horsemen are on, and he can slide his tree herder over to get the one near the hill on the left, and that puts them kind of at a draw. And then if the dragon flies back there to get the one behind the house, then that would give Chris three points to two. Um, could could Thomas get enough unit strength, like Yol play in the middle, to like burn the middle objective or something to take it so that he wouldn't... Like the they might, like the, the unit one. might can't. die, but he might be able to take the objective and at least burn it. If he can get you enough can't burn. The middle one you can't burn. burn. The middle one can't right, burn. Right, the middle one you can't burn. Right. Just kidding. So he, could try that. Yeah, so he, he could try that, that for the right one. Troop. Yeah. He could get that rev cap troop back to the right one. In two turns, maybe. The one in his deployment zone on the right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah if he wanted to turn around. That might be sure. a better play. Putting something cheaper to go hold that one. Allowing his dragon boy to come back and play. That's professional Maybe. commentating right there, okay? Dragon yeah, Boy's coming to play. Because then it'll just be a play for who gets the middle one. Yep. Yeah, because if you can get something back to that back objective behind the impassable, if you're Chris, that kind of limits his... Uh, there's not much that's going to go threaten you there. There's nothing really left. Well, the Pegasus probably the won't get there. The Pegasus can get to that... Uh, difficult, the flat terrain behind the monolith for, and out of art of the uh, Rev King. Okay. <laughs> yeah. That's where it should be going, I think. Yeah. Unless the dragon turns around and faces you instead of running back there. Yeah, it's interesting. So so, so at this point, it seems like Chris might, might basically just be like, I'm just going to hold on my three and make you come to me and try to fight me for him, and then hope that I outgrind you, because going in on you isn't really working out well for me. 
so far this game. Well, it's kind of what Thomas did in the bottom left, right? He's like, I'm just going to set up here and wait for you to come. And then right. hopefully and that's, my and that's counter charge. Yeah. Hmm. But now he's also kind of abandoning that token in the bottom there. Yeah, the yeah. middle uh, horseman unit, I probably would have. Toad onto the, the hill so you could see. but And just threaten the middle as opposed yeah. to going Yeah, because so if you're. In. If you're moving up here, like you're planning to go in late game and wipe out the middle. Which is a I little guess, like risky business in my opinion. Well Chris doesn't have much to get back to that left one, the bottom left one. So and if he sends I guess he can send the Pegasus back down there and it'll be safer than the one in the top right, maybe. Yeah. But that also means he's he's pulling the Pegasus away and he can't threaten the one on the top right. So either the dragon yeah. or the rev cap troop can turn around and go get it. And he's still losing yeah. two to three. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so really he has to get back, hold that back bottom token, and then make sure something in the middle dies so that he can take one of those tokens on the, the middle or the right side. Yep. Yeah, because right now the horsemen aren't really in a position to back up into range of that bottom left one. No, I think he's yeah. sending the Pegasus down there for a turn five or six yeah, to pick it up. No, no, I'm just... Yeah, he's just agreeing with you. That uh Oh, I was like, you haven't left but that's what option. I said. I swear. Yeah. So, sorry, Alex. No, that's okay. I'm just dumb. My penchant for explaining things in detail. In detail. <laughs> See, this is why you don't get two Canadians on the cast, because you're too polite and you spend time agreeing <laughs> with each other too much and waiting for each other to talk. Just, yeah, <laughs> sorry. Do you want See? us to act like the Brits and yell over each other? Or we could be Australian and just make up words and insult. <laughs> <laughs> just make I up. I mean, I literally make up words like for all the units. Yeah. Mm. Everything, everything has a cutesy name. Everything's got a cutesy name. You just, you just randomly say that's a potato, and I don't know <laughs> what you mean. <laughs> just and then like all of them just agree and go with it, and you're like, I am so confused. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we always call them Rev Cavies down here. That's what they're named. Really? Yeah. Uh, is it? Okay. Rev cabbies? I don't know. Yeah, those, They're rev cabbies the now. Yeah. <laughs> the abysses. Mm -hmm. Everything. They're rev cabbies they now. Rev cabbies, the thick chaff. Chaffies. Thickies? No. This is no, no. Weird. Thick chaffies. No. I don't, I don't that's, know why you've got it. That's going the wrong direction. <laughs> <clears throat> This is why I don't have friends. It happens when you try to be Australian. <laughs> Everything just goes wrong. <laughs> I think it's because we're saying it with the wrong accents. Our accents just don't make it sound nice. It just comes off yeah. super odd. <laughs> right. And right. it doesn't sound cute without the Australian accent. It just sounds weird. Yeah. Yeah. yeah there was it's a, a little bit confusing, but cute. It's okay. Um, I was watching a TV show, and I, I, I can't remember the name of it, but the, the premise of the show was they were... Uh, trying to make an American version of a British comedy show. That's that, that's what they were doing in the show, right? Like the, the characters right. were the writers okay. and producers. Um, yeah. And they were going to try to use some of the original British cast. And so they had them come and do their, their reading. And they did it in British accents. And it was hilarious. And then they said, now try to do it in your American accents. And they read the same script in American accents. And it sounded creepy as hell. And they were all like, <laughs> this does not work. We might need to rewrite this. I don't know that this works for Americans. Um So, yeah. Anyway, there's a Kings of War game going on here. There um, is. He's moved the archers back into the woods. So now, because they're out of arc of the rev cab. Yeah, I mean, at this point, he's threat. he's got to push up. Yeah, he has to get up, threaten that rightmost objective. So those rev, rev cab move up, the archers can move it behind them. Yeah, Potentially out of harm's way. Potentially out of harm's way. Or, or, or if they can get there before the rev cab troop boxes them out. Yeah. They've got more unit strength. They can hold it. Exactly. What is that down there behind um, that's next to the Curse High Priest? Is that the the, summer, the crone? Yeah. The, the levitation crone, yeah. It's going to probably get some drain lives on, the, uh, on that priest. Mm -hmm. Are we, we going to have a drain life and battle? And drain life to the rev cab. Well, her, her, the offensive the range of her drain life is only six still. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, as, as she, um, I guess it, 
Not sure if she's moved yet. <laughs> probably. Oh, I, th I thought she had. I guess maybe not. Yeah, I, ma I imagine she probably has. And then the archers are going to be sixes on half dice. So. But drain life nine, plus maybe one more from the archers. It's not mm -hmm. a terrible shot at, at picking up the high priest. Yeah. And that would definitely limit his options for the last two turns because he wouldn't be able to surge anything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If he needs to get something back to a token, he can't turn them and surge them onto it or anything like that. Yeah, well, getting rid of surge for late game with huge. He does still have the monolith. Oh, that's true. But still limits options. Apparently, we insulted two thirds of the known word world. And world. In Oops. five minutes. In five minutes. Success. I think we could beat that record. I feel like we could do better than that. And our Probably quest to get so flagged by YouTube is offensive content. Yeah. Well, it's, it, to quote Jack Nicholson from uh, Mars Attacks, two out of three ain't bad. <laughs> two out of three ain't bad. <laughs> All right. So this is going to be a pretty big uh, reckoning here come next turn, I feel like. Um, as Thomas has, has found himself in the position where if he just sits back and waits, he loses the game. Um, so he's got to move up and make something happen, but he doesn't have anything in position to make an assault this turn. So he pretty much has to set up his anvil here in the middle and move his cav up to be the hammers next turn and just see if see if the uh, Empire Dust comes in or not. Um, yeah. Yep, okay. push everything up. Just do it. Just push it all up. Make him come get Go. you. Go yep. for it. It's the only way you win that game. Chris doesn't have anything to deal with the tree herder in one turn. Like maybe the both enslaved guardians at once, but they're both be hindered. So, yep, and that just brings them both over to get charged by horsemen. Yeah, horsemen yeah. I don't think he would double. be mad if he double charged the. Yeah, the warden Listen, like the horsemen are st the horsemen are both in range of that left enslaved guardian horde as is. Yeah, so it's dead next turn if it doesn't do something. Yeah. And the one on the hill has Strider, so it doesn't care if it runs into the... Um, yeah, so it'll be CS, CS3. Yeah. So it's going to be threes and twos. That sounds like a D-E-D date. Yep. And if Mikhail's kicking around, that's Dread on top of that. So I think even that alone might even be enough. Yep. I feel like this is a pretty good position for him to be in. Um he might be giving up a flank charge. Surge flank charge on these tall spears from this regiment. Yes. If he doesn't shut down this this priest somehow. Uh, he could he, he could potentially wind blast them, I guess, from here, but I don't think even wind blasting them back is gonna give you give them enough space. Because if he wind blasts them back, then they'll just be in the flank. Yeah, because they are right now. 10 inches away. So it's going to be a 4 for the drain life. Yep, and now he's going to shoot with the archers as well. See if he can put another wound on the priest. Nothing. 10 twice. Right? 10 twice. 3 will definitely not do it. So the priest will live. Surge stuff another day. Blast, and here comes yeah. the wind blast. It will make the surge more difficult. Yeah. But, but it might also just give him a straight up flank charge that he might just take. Oh, yeah. and no successes. Nothing. Nope, nope. No successes on Wind Blast. I'm going to call it that. I know it's really more like bias confirmation, but, you know, it's a gag at this point. So I'm gonna keep it going. Wasn't Running there a guys. whole thing someone wrote about how UV dice is not a real thing? Like the joke that like UV dice do super swingy things that it works out to, I don't know. Yeah, Nick, Nick, Nick Williams did a bunch of tests and showed that the statistical um, distribution of the rolls is not outside the realm of what you would expect real dice to do. Um, yeah, and that just, is really just, just remember the bad. You, you right. remember bad rolls more than good rolls. It's just the way it is. Right. Yeah. So it's, so it's just anecdotal. Yeah, but still feels like hashtag UB dice. Still feels like hashtag UB dice is fun, right? It's fun to say. Yeah, it's fun. Um, but yeah. 
Um, I think it's the sort of thing that, like, as soon as ones. as soon as more people there are a lot of ones there. As soon as more people started playing UB, like it, there's um, like once once you get to a certain scale of anything happening, enough anecdotes get generated that are memorable enough that yeah. it supports just about any narrative, no matter how ridiculous. And yeah. mm-hmm. uh, that's gonna be turned. You don't fun. remember the fact that it's like okay, he just <laughs> missed it, but one on uh, the nerve check there. Yep. You really hate my soul snare. <laughs> It's ensnaring his snow soul. I said snow. What the fuck is snow soul? You're, you need some sleep. <laughs> no. I need to be awake. It's my weekend off. All right. All right, moving into... All right, so let's see if this game wraps up in 25 yeah, minutes. Before you jump over <laughs> to the other one. Yeah. Alex is very popular yes. today. He's commentating here with us and then also commentating the Ray Shields game and Never. Ben Johnson that starts. I'm the at commentator last resort. I'm the we, last told him, commentator we told him that he, he owed us as many hours of commentary as he took in his game yesterday. <laughs> yes. So he's got to do some games. <laughs> he's got at least another hour and a half of commentary. At least four too. hours. At least four hours. Yeah. 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 I'm just learning how to play the game at a, at a human speed. <laughs> it's, it's, just, it's research. All right, so here's where he's trying to figure out how to go about doing this flight charge. Mm-hmm. Actually, rev- um, Brenton William, Brenton was saying that like all three of the longest games that have been taken place, he have he has been a commentator on. So now so, it's is it is it really the players or is it Brenton? <laughs> it's really his fault. It's Brenton's fault. Yep. Yeah. I'll blame Brenton. Yeah, we all want to make sure that he gets uh, plenty of time. Talk to tell us stories about how he's afraid of horses. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I am sorry that I took so long in, in my game. I usually don't play that slowly, but like Rashad's list was faster than mine across the board and hit harder than mine across the board. So I kept, I spent so much time trying to figure out what I could do. And I went through every unit and thought about it. And, and every, every pathway I went down ended with, and then I get murdered by vampires. So I probably shouldn't do that. It's like, okay, let's back up and go to the next unit. Then like, I feel like I burned a whole lot of time looking like I was doing nothing when I was thinking through all my options and coming to the conclusion that I shouldn't move. I should just like hide and shoot at him and delay as long as I can. I'm like, this makes for such exciting broadcasting. Well, when you have an army of moderate nerve, you know, units, you know, an army full of super hammers is terrifying and creates a lot of bad situations. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. It's like, and yeah, you had the zombie trolls as opposed to all vampires. So it's, yeah. you needed a little bit of a grind as opposed to like one shot and things. Right. And I needed to win a chaff battle somewhere because I I had like wraiths and zombie regiments versus rev calf troops. Um, yeah. Yeah. And I can't take the risk of my hammers getting chaffed up or I'll I'll die. Plus, like the the longer it took him to get to me, and the more turns I got to shoot with catapults, the the better it was for me. So. Like just Let's back think. up, slow down, like take it slow. Yeah, you have a patient on that list. Yeah. Mm. Looks like I'm not doing anything. But they're actually playing straight into my uh, my dastardly plan. However, I'm not playing that list this evening, so don't worry. Ooh. I'll be playing a list that I don't actually know how to use, so I'll just throw caution to the wind and go for it. What time does your game start tonight, Mike? Uh, I think we're at eight. 30 Eastern. Very nice. 5.30 Pacific. Who's Pacific? All right, so looks like he is trying to position this for a flank surge. Yep. Except he's facing the wrong direction right now. (laughs) It's kind of weird. You just forget which way his calf was facing. I see. Yeah, I think he wanted to see the front because the the knights stick out over the front edge. Right, and he's, he's trying. Oh, to he's trying to see sure how how he can miss the forest, basically. Like, yeah. what is the and angle? St- and, he's, the and he's got the tape measure there to measure halfway so that he can see where the arc of sight intersects. Because the sur- where his leader point is at the beginning of the surge will determine which facing he is in. That's right. Kind of looks like he's clipping pistol pixels of the oh there he goes. Yeah, of the he 
Yeah, he's adjusting. Okay. If he leaves him there, though, that'll be a three-inch surge that he will need, which so far he's been good at getting three successes, just not four. Yeah, and he has the this Cursed High Priest is not disordered this turn, so he has the Monolith and the Cursed High Priest to get. Right, that. and I don't know that there's another surge charge he's trying to get. That's pretty critical, right? Getting them into the flank unhindered. Well, yeah. That's huge, because then now they have the Thunderous, and they're not affected by Phalanx. Yep. Um, so what do you do with your dragon, though? Are you basically just flying for that back right token, and knowing that that's what you're doing for the rest of the game, is scoring that point? I don't know. Because, like, like, Mikael, if you poke into the forest to threaten whatever comes at your enslaved guardians, Mikael jumps you. Right. I feel like you kind of not have to. You're, you're not facing straight right, so you can't just do a 20 inch move and face inward, which would be a good move, like face down table. Mm -hmm. but I think, yeah, you're just going to pivot and fly 20 and get that point. Right. Because you kind of want your rev cap troop here see. to hold this one. Yeah. So that, the, so that the the archers here can't sneak over and snag snag it from you in turn six. Yeah, basically you want to move the rev cab three inches, so the front of the rev cab is more than three inches away from that token, right. so that the archers can't move up. And that just leaves you your two enslaved guardians that have to somehow hold or contest at least the center. Well, you, or you can just make you more. You spawn of them, an no. extra one, then you're fine. Right. Three was, really helps. Right. All good things come in threes, right? I learned that in school. Yep. Um, that will help. So that'd be a brutal. Spearman for sure. And puts them in a position that's out of harm's way from the horseman. Uh, can you, not, not from the one on the hill. They can still see it. Oh, can they? Yeah, I think they'll still flip their corner. We need to get these other units out of the way, but. That's probably oh, yeah. doable. 16. Can he, can he pivot out of 16? I think he can. See, that's what he's checking right now. Uh, yeah, that's pivot. Even. And then if he slides the other one to the right, he might be able to get out of charge range. Yeah. Yep, but he had better kill them. <laughs> yeah. And he's going in. Yeah. Okay. Now, does he yeah, risk he blocking off the surge? Mm, no. I don't No. No, he's not, not, yet. not with he a single charge. I think... No, I think he still hits the. I think he still hits the corner first. I don't mm. think he's quite centered on that unit. The slave guardians look like they probably need to slide a touchdown more. Yeah, he's checking he's it. Checking yeah. it now. Yeah, he hits the corner first. Well, yeah, I think Mike's right. They slave guardians need to slide to the right just a little. Just a touch, yeah. Just a touch, but I think they still touch I... the corner first. Oh, there's only nine guys. Yeah, yeah, I think it's close. Yep. It's not perfectly symmetrical, like the Ooh. array. Where's, oh, maybe the monolith is going back to camp on that objective. <laughs> oh, right. It does have unit strength. They can get there. That was an interesting move. Because it was facing down toward the bottom of the board, right? Yeah. It was not, it's not, it's not nimble. So it can't turn that so far. So you would have had to go straight back. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know if they could go that far. Yeah, it's just speed five. Yeah. Yeah, it's not gonna get there in time. It's only got one more move. It's a hold on, does it shamble? It's not shambling. It's not oh, shambling, okay. but it shouldn't have been able to move at all yeah. in that direction this turn. It would have just been able if to fake. If it pivoted that much, it would have been a or back up two and a half inches. That's about all it could have done. That's interesting. Yeah, I didn't think that the monolith was an option to do that because I didn't think it could turn around that much either. I'm not sure that he should be able to do that move. Hmm. Hashtag cheating scandal. <laughs> Not quite as crazy as the Mike Atkins. Just kidding. Not quite. Oh. It's always not quite, as, not quite as blatant and egregious. 
Mikael could still just go kill it before before the end of the game. He could. Go, Mikael! Yeah. Which, yeah, which, which might be what he's 18. checking in. Yeah, he's only 35 inches away from that token, so in two turns he could get there. Just 35 inches, no big deal. It is kind of funny, though, right, to be at this point of the game and be like, somebody tell The Rock to go sit on the objective, please. <laughs> Quickly. Slowly float over in that direction, please. Right. You're faster than all of the actual moving things, so somehow go get it. Yeah, not shambling rock. Yeah, I don't know about that. because That like, doesn't uh, make it to the sun tree. I feel like he's going to want that unit strength in the middle. The dragon can't really do anything useful at this point, because anywhere he goes, Mikhail's going to kill him. So the dragon might as well just beat feet, get far away, yeah. hold that token, make him come get you. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because the model is a titan, so Mikhail will double his tax. Mm -hmm. He's only dash right. 15. So. Uh, dash 17, but it'll be 16. Oh, dash 17? Oh, okay. Yeah. It's at 16 with uh, the dread. But oh, the right, soul yeah. snare is dash 15. But yeah, threes and threes elite, 12 attacks. And then Dread on top of that. Could be one turn kill for Mikhail, but probably two. But he yeah. Yeah, definitely I guess can he kill it. I have enough time to do it. Yeah. yeah. Oh. I mean, Chris, Chris has to kill those tall spears this turn. I keep that, 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 that can't stall. If that does, he's, he's kind of in trouble. Um, because I think, are these guys even within three? They are not. Mm -hmm. So currently, not. so currently, Thomas has the center objective. Um, and if, if you know, the, the tree herder and the abyssal horseman all the way over here on the left going against the enslaved guardians that are here in the middle, and the ones that are on the hill charge off and hit the ones, the, the enslaved guardians that are fighting the tall spears, and the Impalers just walk forward to get out of their way. Um, he doesn't really have a good way to get that token back. Mm -mm. What's the charge range in arc for the Tree Herder like right now? Pretty much just doesn't say Guardians. Okay. Tree Herder cannot get to the Monolith, but can definitely get to the Enslaved Guardian. Well, he probably should be able to get to the monolith. <laughs> <laughs> probably, right, he probably should, but can't. Can't where it currently sits. Yeah. But I think that's a situation that Thomas kind of finds himself in, is that he's got uh, one, one too few units to hold two points in the middle here. After he commits them to combat, and realizes that at least one of them is going to die to a double charge next turn. Oh, I guess he's getting back here to both enslaved guardians. All right, so yeah, horse. Um, did he already move the dragon up? It looks like to be able to see around the yeah, forest. He just in the middle. He just just pivoted a little bit to peek around the corner. Okay. Mm hmm. Well, I guess that now works if you're sending the rock it. to go sit on yeah, now, objective. Yeah, now the assassin can see him. He can see the tree so herder, that, but I don't think he can quite get to the impalers. If the drain life doesn't kill the assassin this turn. What's really doing? The rev king. I think he's trying to, I think he's trying to get the enslaved guardian out of charge range of the horseman. Um. Yeah, but there's 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 no way to do that because even if he commits the rev cav to block either the impalers or the tree herder, the other one will still come get his enslaved guardian. True. That's really like moving the monolith up as a blocker might have been. More might have been a better yeah. Yeah, I feel like I feel like Chris is gonna have trouble pulling this one out at this point. Mm hmm There's too many hammers, not enough trash at this point. 
Yeah. A lot of the things that have, the few things that have died for Thomas haven't really been end game piece. Like they're not pieces that they're sorry. They're disposable pieces that have basically died. Um, he hasn't really lost any big hammers. He hasn't really lost any big units. Yeah. His key units are all still alive. Yeah, exactly. And Those clean, were the nice like, words I was going for. Except for like the two wounds on the Abyssal Horseman, which I don't know if he rolled for regen last turn. I might have forgot. And then Yeah, I can't remember. He may have forgotten that they were on them since he's left them back away from the unit. <laughs> can they oh, get around? He's checking to see. If, can he get past? Yeah. yeah. If you chaff up the tree herder and you protect your guardians from a double charge, they'll have to slide. Have but to if slide. he does that and slides, then the, only the impalers can get in. Yeah. Which is they'll be hindered. The charge so, you can take. Yeah. Yeah, that's a charge. Although and then they then, can maybe. Then you'll be stuck fighting them, and you'll be three inches away from the middle token, and you won't be holding it. So, yeah, you're, you're keeping be, yourself alive, but you're not contributing to the scenario. Yeah, I don't know. And then the impalers are, are in between you and the objective, right? So then you have to get through them, and you've got well, but but I guess at that point the dragon comes in from the side, flanks the impalers, and turns around and tries to live, mm -hmm. standing in a standing in a pond. Holding the middle. Yeah, because that dash 15 in the middle of a pond isn't terrible. Although the hill, the abyssal person on the hill have boots. So. Huh. And the tree herder, it's Pathfinder or Strider. Well, good. Chris has taken a extra special long time this turn to try to see if there's some way to salvage this, but uh, don't think he's going to find a whole lot of options that put him in a good position for turn six. I think he can pick up points and try to hold a couple of objectives for bonus points, but I'm not sure he's going to figure out a way to uh, win this game short of like uh, Thomas yeah, double winning this something. I think, yeah, there he goes with the slide. Yep. Which I think keeps them alive for a turn. It does keep them alive for Which, a turn. Which, at the end of the game, at the end of the game, that might be enough. I don't know. Possibly, but it, it once again, leaves him in a position where he's, this this unit is not holding a token. Yeah. Um, the Rev Cav are contributing to that token, but he's at Thomas has enough unit strength here to, to hold the middle. There's nothing else within three, so he's still holding that one. Um, and I guess and once this once this flank surge happens over here, I don't think he's going to have anything within three of that token either. So um, even if he does well this this round of combat, he's not going to he's he's still going to have to make other things happen to get some points in the next turn. Yeah, um, just to even it up. I guess char charging those impalers, he not guaranteed to kill them, so he would be. He would have to have a good backup reform to get out of the way. Yeah, yeah, and charging charging the enslaved guardians with the impalers definitely puts them in range of the dragon in a flank yeah. charge, and they and, and it probably wouldn't be hindered because you'd probably box it out of the. Uh, yeah. yeah, just out. Yeah. All right, so the monolith is going to try. Yep, monolith is going to try its surge on the revcav, and it's going to need at least three, and looks like it got four. Which should be enough. Yep. yep. And that means the cursed high priest can now uh, use drain life instead of surge. Yep. Can drain life the drain life problem. <laughs> drain life off. It's a battle. Drain life is so good. It I, hurts my feelings when people use it against me, fearless. but objectively, it's very good. Yeah, drain like nine on up. Boots of levitation. Caster is quite nice. 
That's nice, yes. For 155 points, yeah, that's a pretty good value. I usually put the, the wings on that crown, but I, had the, I think the boots of levitation is, an, is a nice option. Mm -hmm. Looks like that's what he's doing, so that'll be a green light. Three wounds on the crown, which brings the first high priest down to one wound, so they're basically just passing the same wounds back and forth between each other now. They're playing hot potato, okay, Mike? Basically, yeah. Yep. Are these your wounds? No, no, I'm pretty sure they're yours. No, no, I think they were yours first. No, no, I insist. You take them with me. Please. That's four successes and another four on the reroll. That's going to be three more wounds on the assassin. Soul Snare gets healed back up. And the assassin is 11 13. So that's a six twice. Yep. Roll the nerve. <laughs> and a big. There's a seven. Yep. And an eight. eight. That will pick Ooh. up the assassin. That is that pretty assassin big because him. that that means the dragon can actually do something next turn instead of getting punched by an assassin and grounded and taken out of the game. Yep. That assassin has done quite a bit though this game. Like the assassin well, has the been very involved. Probably be dead. I think the first attack on the soul snare was subpar, so Yeah. Well, I guess the yeah, assassin has it really busy. because because the the cursed high priest that he jumped is still alive, and so is the soul. That's true. Yeah. And there's a snake eyes right. on the other uh, character, the chrome bound sorceress down there. So she'll but be he fine. He did occupy the soul snare and cursed high priest for three turns. So that's that's uh, not, true. That's so they're still they're not, they're not dead, but they've been um, right. neutralized. Or, right neutralized, for yeah. for this game, all they did was kill the assassin, basically. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, so there's the hindered. There's, that is okay, not even going to no be a wound wounds. on three man. Hmm. Three man laughs at your attempts. Right. right. And now the one that pretty much matters here. Yeah. If this doesn't go well, it's going to be really sad if uh, he doesn't quite do enough wounds and. Uh, Kicks himself for not drain lifing the tall spears instead of the sorceress. Yeah, that's a 32. He's got 50 attacks on fours and twos, so he should be good. He should, but like I feel like even when I'm in this situation, uh, I still drain life the unit I'm trying to kill in combat yeah. to make sure it's good because oh, so you're not going to kill the 19. caster. No, so 19. So he that was, so four twice. And dead. I am shocked. Got it. That, well, not shocking, but very important. That's my sarcastic shock. <laughs> you haven't done this enough that's with me, good. Alex. That's my sarcastic shock. <laughs> oh, that, that's my that's my response to your sarcasm. <clears throat> Deadpan response. That's my adult response to your response. I stick my tongue out at you. Alex, is your other game Anybody starting in? now too? Yes, at two thirty. I let them know that I'll be a little. I'll be joining a little bit late. Ah, okay. I was wondering. I was like, what time is it? <laughs> there we go. All right, so we took out the horde of stall spears. It looks like they're just trying to figure out what kind of position is best here. He's trying to pivot out of range of the middle horsemen. Yeah. And potentially out of arc of the impalers as well, I think. All right, so it looks like you got the tall spear horde. Yes, he did. Yes. Which is good, but still doesn't put him in a position to really hold anything. Mm. Yeah, that rightmost objective is still up for grabs. Yep. And those bowmen have a clear path, if a slow path, to get there. Yep. But they got two turns and basically nothing else to do, right? Yep. 
Yep. They just look cute. They're just here to look cute, okay? Yeah. And like do you so well I guess he could spin something around and surge something into them. Um which might be what he ends up having to do just to get that. He's gonna need all the resources that like, all of those three combat regicide units to deal with yeah. Thomas. Yeah, like very very careful resource management, right? Like they all they both have four hammers left, essentially. Although Thomas has Mikael to augment. Right. And they both now have six scoring units left on the table. Oh. So they're mm -hmm. tied in terms of scoring units. And right now they are tied for objectives too, no? No. Thomas has two. Two. Oh, yeah, because he's got the middle regiment there. Sorry. Chris. Chris has none right now. Yeah. Yeah, because I thought for some reason Chris was within three with the, but he's not. No, no, no he's, he's not. at four. Yeah. And the the Revcap troop here are, are close enough, but the Impalers are more unit strength, so they they've got it. Yeah. So if the game ended right now, it'd be two to nothing. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. So so Chris has to figure out how to come back from a two point deficit. Uh, and considering that, like, this Pegasus is pretty much going to fly down and grab this token yeah. probably next turn. Um, it, yeah, it's, it's Thomas's turn, yeah. turn right now. Bottom this, of five. Uh, bottom of five. And these, these horsemen can come down off the hill, hit these rev cab, and still be within three of, the, of that token at the bottom of the hill to hold it. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. The other one can come around. I would fly the Pegasus down this turn, I think, so that it's far away from everything and out of harm's way. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Yeah, I wouldn't leave them hanging around just in case there's something they can do. Mm -hmm. So what's his so what's his play here? Like it's a tricky oh. position to enter right now. Right, because he's 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 like, well, right now I'm winning, but if I don't do anything to preserve that win, uh, you might snatch it from me in turn six, um, yeah. and I won't have enough stuff left to come back. The play might be to like go all in on that RevCap troop, reform in a good position so that he can't charge too many things, and then have a turn six counter charge to get the middle one. Yeah. Because going in on these enslaved guardians is kind of a trap, right? Because then the dragon will come yeah. in and flank whatever you sent. Um, these impalers are just kind of in a rough spot, though, right? Uh, mm -hmm. You got things in you got things in your flank, and you've got to deal with them, or he will take that that middle token from you next turn when he crowds in on you. Um, and I don't think there's like really a way to get everything in your front. No, I don't think so. Not at those angles. No. Yeah, if he does tree herder and impalers into that true and then positions both horsemen to kind of threaten and stay out of threat range of the guardians maybe okay that's better my and laptop was dying i had to make a request for my charger yeah, it's a, it's kind of a precarious position to be in because he could easily misplay this and give Chris enough wiggle room next turn to, to swipe this from him. Um, it's been very tight. Like Someone said in the comments a while ago that it's been a very guarded game, and I don't think that's changed. Yeah. It is still. So the tree herder advances after he could, but be giving up a flank to dragon. Yeah. 
And if it's an unhindered flank, like that's a that's a big problem. And I can't tell if where the tree herders lined up walking forward would yeah, leave it enough looks of the, like the flank would would clear the pond potentially. Yeah. And I think even if so, it didn't, yeah, there's a good chance clear. you go too far and it ends up clearing it anyways. Right. Yeah. Like that's super risky. Yeah. All right. Yeah, so he did fly the flank, Pegasus I'd down. Almost, I would almost. I wouldn't mind it, but yeah. Yeah, I would be. I would be tempted to offer up that flank, draw the dragon out, and then counter charge it with one of these horsemen units over here. Next turn. So he did fly the Pegasus down to hold that token, so that's one more. So now he's holding three to zero. Um, unfortunately, there's not really... I mean, he doesn't want to burn this one on the left. He wants to keep that one. Um... Yeah, I don't know. You could send uh, you could send Mikael to the. Uh... Now he's in the flank of the Guardian Brutes, so he can't tie them up. I don't think he can see the Soul Snare. You can send him into the side of the Rev Cav, and between Mikael and the Tree Herder, hope to kill it while leaving both of your Abyssal Horsemen back, ready to countercharge whatever comes in to try to take the middle. Yeah, if you charge Mikhail into the flank and advance him, he's mighty. And it'll be a hindered flank or hindered charge from the instant. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. So they might not be able to kill him. And then and and then you can reform uh, the impalers to put the uh, the guardian brutes, which is me, the enslaved gardens over here, the rev cab in front. Yeah. And probably be too far for the dragon to get your rear. So the archers are doing what now? Uh, well, they moved up and turned because they couldn't march through the forest. So I guess he figured he might as well face the mm -hmm. calves so that he doesn't leave a flank and tempt him to just spin around and do a flank surge on them. Yeah, yeah. The yeah. dragon is right. currently twenty over twenty inches away from the impalers. So. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. I, so Yeah, this is a tricky situation, and he's thinking all the way through it before he does it because, yeah, both of them are actually in a fairly mm -hmm. curious position. Like, like I felt like Thomas was in a, a better position than this until Chris popped those tall spears, um, yeah, and ended up with both those units over there in his flank. And now, uh, yeah, it's pretty tricky. Well, have three fearless, fearless defense five units that have no wounds on them. There aren't a lot of wounds on a lot, like on much right now. Yeah, yeah, everything Even that's, that reps have like, troop is significant amount of nerve. So. Yep. Mm -hmm. All right. Looks Even like he has decided to go, to go in. So it's going to be impalers hindered to the front or not? Maybe not. Yeah, probably a bad idea. Yeah, the dragon's going to munch on them. Yep. Next turn. Yeah, 15 attacks sitting on fours with crushing one. Still probably not, probably. not gonna do it. Not gonna do it. It's a dash 17 unit. Yeah. Probably not gonna do it. Alright, so he's gonna take the flank probably with the horseman. And then, or he might just be taking the reform. Take us the reform. See if you get the dragon and the slave guardians in the front. At the same time. Yep. Yeah. Yep. I don't. I wouldn't want to be in either of these positions. <laughs> yeah, me neither. Like I don't really love either of them. <laughs> like they're both really precarious. Uh, and I'm having trouble thinking of a thing thing to do for either of them this turn. That leaves them in a better position. Then they're already. I'm sure you can. Yeah, that that those impalers. I don't. They're. they're you might as well take the flank on the rev cab and then and then reform. Yeah, I, I don't agree with that. I think that's what can. I would do there. And especially with if that. They just like, reform. 
I was just saying, if they just reform where they are, like it's no better than charging and then reforming. Yeah. Yeah. Might as well get add those extra tax in. And also if you if you do the flank charge and then reform, I think that leaves you more in the water, so there'll be more hinder charges, I think, too. Yeah, because right now the guys on the on your right might be able to get in on you without hitting the pond. Exactly. So at least if you go forward, do the flank charge, and then reface to put everyone in your front, some of those units are going to have to go through the water to do it. Yep. It might put you within 20 of the dragon if you do that, if he does the flank, no matter what he does with the reform. But at that point, you just want the impalers to take all the charges so that you can count. Yeah, well, then just let, it, let us embrace all the charges. Oh, might not. Oh. You just want to get them in the way. Uh, well, you might, because you'll overhang here. It might still be mm -hmm. able to see you. Yeah. Or might still be able to reach you. It'll be close. It'll depend on, like, the precise Yeah, but, I mean, if they're going to, like, double, triple charge those impalers, then I feel like if all his resources it's are going to go to that, it's not that bad for you. Yep. Well, then you can jump the dragon. Although it's only one unit strength, so you might want yeah. to. And this is one of those tricky situations, right? It's the it's the bottom of the game, it's a close game. You don't have any really good options, but you got to do no. something because you can't just stand there and let your opponent dictate what happens yeah. in the last two turns of the game either. Well, yeah, sitting still is not is one of the worst options. So, yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what I would do in this situation. Call, um, cry call and it drink. a draw and go to the bar. That's like yeah. so. Strange. Just buy drinks. <laughs> yeah. Ten ten draw. Ten ten draw. Let's go. Let's let's go get a beer and watch the top table. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> or you or actually at this point, let's be realistic. We've been live for three hours. Your clock would have ran out like an hour ago. So true. 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 <laughs> no, there are no clocks in UB. <laughs> well, there are clock now. If you want to use Mike's online clock. That's right. Yeah, next, yeah next weekend. Next weekend, there will definitely be clocks. Yeah, I'm not sure if Adam is making people use clocks uh, for bug eater, but I'm definitely proud. Okay, so it looks like he's thinking about doing this triple charge on that poor rev calf troop. Poor like, little just, big chaff. The I just wanted chaffy. to go say hi to the tree, but now, now I'm going to get smashed on all sides. Ground to dust. Oh, maybe not. Maybe. Are these I think rejecting? he might be checking his reforms. Maybe. maybe. I love when people check their reforms. It feels so cocky, and I love it. Like, it's logical to do. Don't right, get me after wrong. I plan. After I blow through this unit, then I'll... Uh, after yeah. I beat you up. And, like, yes, this is, like, a triple charge. Chances are it would be logical to check your reforms. But sometimes when people check their reforms, I'm like, you're really confident your dice are going to roll hot, eh? <laughs> I mean, if all goes according to plan, they'll be on snakes, and this would be a terrible time to snake something. Yeah, this is yes. wrong. And there oh. goes Mikael into the flank, which isn't great, but gets him doing something and puts him in a position to contribute to any combat yeah. that comes next turn. Because now he's in the middle, so he can go hit the monolith or he can hit the dragon. Yeah, it does get a few wounds on them. Yeah. If they don't get drained life back. <laughs> Because that Soul Snare and Cursed High Priest are now not dis they're ordered. They're not disordered. Yeah. <laughs> so that's Drain Life 16 coming at wh whoever's left. left. Right. I would almost want to, at, at this point, like turn the, uh, um, the other Abyssal Horseman with two wounds and put them on the hill so they can see all the way across. Yep. I would move them closer to that objective. Oh, yeah. Rethinking it. Maybe he <laughs> no. did the math on the drain life. <laughs> Change mind seeds. Well, whether you're there or or after completing that charge, if they feel like stepping up and drain lifing you, they're going to. Yeah, he could position himself just below the forest and still threaten things. Mm. Okay. Maybe. 
Now he's just moving to block the charge instead, I think. Yeah. Since he is mighty, he can do that. Yeah. Just yeah. try to get in the way, box them out of getting within three. I still put him in a position to help out next turn as needed. Yeah. Yeah, he'll have like a hard time when like enslave guardians and the dragon maybe, but then that puts the dragon in a weird place. So. Right. Yeah, it puts puts the dragon in a place for these horsemen to come kill it next turn. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I think there's more value there. Like the four made up your mind. that he would do in the flank. I don't think are important. Mm hmm. I would want the leader point on the hill. Three, six, nine, twelve. And go over there, you're not going to be able to see across your own unit. Uh, uh, 15, you know, you could, you could turn and put your leader point on the hill, be able to see everything. Mm -hmm. There's the regen roll. He finally gets one of them. So he's now committing that. Because if he's on the hill, he could go left or, or up or down. Right. 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 Now he's only. He's committed to up. He's committed to up, possibly because he thinks that's where all the action is going to be. But I, I don't know. I still feel like I want him on the hill so I can see over my own. Yeah. But I guess you, you can't see over your own stuff. You have to be. 50 no, you have to be. Yeah. You would just yeah. be able to see through the hill. Yeah. But I think he could get within. He, he could get fifty percent on the hill, still not be in the dragon's arc of sight, and still not be in range of either of these units to charge him. So. I feel like that I think that's so. the magic position. Yeah. All right, he's moving on to shootings. Okay. We'll, just, we'll see some drain Yay. life and some wind blast, maybe. Although I don't really know what he's going to wind blast since the, the first high priest is parked behind the rev cav, so he can't wind blast it away. And wind blasting these enslaved guardians over into the pond doesn't really matter much. Hinders them? Yeah, yeah, I mean, it means no matter what they do, they're hindered, I guess. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. It doesn't actually push them on the data tokens. And now they, once again, continue to trade the same wounds back and forth for trade relief. Hot potato! Two hits, or two wounds. Or three, four wounds, because defense four, yeah. Defense four, yeah, and it's piercing one, so that's four. That'll put them up to five. Danger zone-ish. Nine twice. Yeah, eight twice. Oh, right. And there's some shooting. Are they dead dread? No. Dash, dash 13, right? On the high priest? I thought it was dash 14. Maybe. No, Chris, high priest there, dash 13. That's oh. a 13, and a 13 again. Oh, poof. That, that will pick up that priest. Oh. So. Important. That's in the inspiring on that side of the board, so. Yeah. The, the crone finally wins the uh, drain life battle. And that's pretty big, because that means now there's not really anything over there to, like, spin the, those uh, rev cap around and kill those archers. If they try to get on this rightmost token next turn, Which, actually, how far away oh, are they from the that monolith? Token? Could they actually yeah. turn and go six? That's true. Yeah, they're um, only eight inches away, so they're they can go up pretty easily. Yeah, they could turn and, and go up and get in. Too. I think. Yeah, they don't yeah, really have any reason to kill the archers. They have a higher unit strength. Yeah, oh, and the point, archers yeah, are they charging they hindered. It won't do much. Mm -hmm. So that was the the impalers in the flank, and then the tree herder. Tree herder does not contribute much. Two wounds. So the eight. And then the horseman. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Four more wow. wounds. Nice. That's not good. Wow. Hey, I mean they're still on double ones. Yeah. So if you're if this was the time for your dice to be kind of like mediocre there, that was the time. Yeah. When you overcommit, you want subpar dice. It's good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You're like, time. this is fine. You may be subpar as long as we get the job done. Right. So do you Save just turn these, do you just turn these impalers around and say, you know, the dragon can come in and rear charge me if he wants to, but then he's gonna be sitting right in the in, in front of the units that I want to charge him with? Yeah, uh, I would do that. Do the, so definitely... do the Rev Cav have 16 to the Crone Cav? Yes. I think. I think so. Oh, 
just no, I think just, so. So they have to sidestep a bit. In. Yeah, they sidestep side side left. Or, or pivot to face away from the dragon, but you don't really want to face away from the dragon. No, I would sidestep no. up. Yeah. Oh, but you're you're yeah. actually out of the dragon's arc, so they could possibly now, nah, but if they turn all the way around. They'll be in the, the arc. Yeah, yeah. I, mean, just, sidestep. I would just sidestep up. Yeah, but if you sidestep, then you're kind of in the way of your other cavalry unit. Not in a great position. Well, it depends See, that's how much why... of that leaf, if that leaf of the tree is blocking line of sight or not. That's how they're playing with the the rep, the rep king can't see them. Yeah. I feel like this is another reason why he really should have put this cavalry unit up on the hill, because now he doesn't have to worry about this one sliding over and getting in their way mm -hmm. and screwing up any turn, any charges next turn. Yeah, I think he can safely pivot that middle horseman unit to the right without getting in the dragon's line of sight. Oh, you're right, yeah, because there's, there's that little bit of forest there. Probably and they were pretty good. Them. They played like the leaves of the trees were part yeah, of the, yeah, the Yeah, the leader point of the archer was on the leaf. Okay. Here, so. Yeah, then it probably is safe to turn them all the way around because you've still got um, these horsemen with enough unit strength holding that token that the dragon can't just come get it. No? Or he might be uh, he might be saying that's his turn. <coughs> so we move to the top of six i am not 100 percent sure uh, i know i'm like question mark question mark yeah i think i think he asked him to check out a couple of things that the enslaved guardians there could do before he decides what to do with them i would guess mm -hmm. see because he moved things and then he updated a couple of Thomas undid a couple of things, it looks like. So, this is critical going into top of six, making sure he's got these units placed just right. Yep. Just making sure that we can age on screen, it's fine. Hopefully it hasn't got too hot in this room yet. So I haven't, you know, died of heat stroke yet. So we're good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Very tricky. They may or may not be in top six. They might still be deciding what to do with it on the reform. We'll never know. We'll never know. <laughs> One day. One day when we're old and gray. <laughs> yeah, maybe he's looking to see if he can pivot past Mikael. Mm. Yeah, because Mikael is mighty, isn't he? Yeah, but if you can oh, pivot, yeah, clear. Oh, okay. Maybe, I guess not. I'm oh, assuming. Oh. I, otherwise, I don't know if I'd... Wait. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> I'm giving up a flag charge. Hold on. Hold on. Yeah, you gotta... You, you have to do something with your horsemen. Are you gonna get flank charged by... Uh, by Rev Cab? There it is. <laughs> oh no, you still you still yeah. have to go more than one though. You're still nicking oh, the line there. It? I think he's still I think he's still nicking the line. Yeah, yeah, I think fifteen just touches. Hmm. Okay. Oh, there <laughs> now we're saying we'll take that charge, but we'll put it in the front. Oh, he won't be able to charge because uh, there won't be space in between him and the tree herder. Yeah, now. On the and that also puts him out the of corner. the arc of the dragon. Yep. Even if the leaves weren't in the way. Nope. Nope. Or not. Didn't like that either. Smart question mark. I don't know. That seemed like a good spot to me. Unless we were missing something. Yeah. Unless we were missing something. Unless he... Which is not the, like... Uh, we never miss anything. Right, but like Mikhail's mighty, so he doesn't have to worry about the Guardian 
uh, the enslaved guardians here coming through. These enslaved guardians aren't going to be able to get around. Tailors. No. Nope. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, yeah. Do the shuffle. There shuffle it is. Okay. Yep. And two, there's two inches, which is got it. Is, so. yeah. I think he's probably there, just trying yeah, to figure yeah. it if it's worth. He is willing to gamble, getting the yeah. two inches. <laughs> yeah, that's possibly part of the part part of the discussion because as you can see here, he's still nicking the next inch yeah. mark, which means if he'd only gone one, he would still be in charge range. Um, yeah. That's a question of do you do you just turn so you're you know you're taking a front charge or do you gamble on sidestepping to get out of that flank charge, which he has. So now the dragon really can't get involved in the middle without getting jumped. Yeah. By double forces. Fifteen. Yeah, I, I think there's not enough space for the dragon to fit into the rear of the tree herder with the horseman there. But I think no. the dragon can get to the rear of these impalers, but I not really so. where it wants to be. Yeah. Yes, the horsemen are kind of not facing exactly the way you'd want them to be right now, but no. especially since, well, one of them is going to have to stay on an objective unless you are confident you can clear out two units. Yeah. So he might have to, like, back back this one up to let this one charge so this one stays on the objective. Yeah. I don't know. I still feel like this one should be on the hill. I'm, <laughs> I'm going to go back to that. He really should put that one up on the hill. <laughs> um, that's really the best spot for it right now. All right. Top of turn six. Yeah. We have passed it back over to Chris, who currently has zero points, and his opponent has three. Chris is about to have at least one, because I think he's sending that monolith boy to get that one in the corner. Yep. With that weird pivot that he did last time. Right. So I went back and looked, and, and the monolith was actually facing down to the bottom right corner before he pivoted, so it was actually oh, okay. it was, it was good. So, oh, okay. It was just a pivot and a move. That makes sense. He probably thought about that the turn before. Like as a backup plan for what had to go over there. Right. Yeah. And or a main at this plan. Point, at, at, at this point, I feel like he's on yeah. like his second or third or fourth backup plan. Yeah. Plan F. We might see H by the end of it. Who knows? Right. Plan F just says fire the people in charge of writing plans. I don't know. <clears throat> Quit all see. plans. Get within Roll. three. He's he's too far to slide and get within three. Yeah. Which would be, you know, be nice, but he's gonna have to turn and hit if he wants that. Yeah. So what's your What's your path to victory here if you're Chris? Like what's your what's your plan? Is there a way to pull this out or no? I feel like there's always a way if dice and you make the right decisions and mm -hmm. yeah, I don't really see one, but may maybe there is. Yeah, because like you move the rev cab up to claim that right objective, you're probably giving those archers a rear. No, that's the, which is like oh, oh, oh. hindered rear, probably okay. It's hindered. It's not, yeah. Yeah. It's not a it's it's survivable. Right. But it's how many of these units can he remove this turn? And can he survive the I think you have to like remember like there's only so much luck you can bank on. Yep. To some extent. So you gotta so you remove so, the impalers. You remove the impalers, you get your dragon in there to block up a counter charge that yeah, might kill you. you just so fly like the dragons, your, basically, yeah, gonna end up in front of some horsemen. Rev King right in front of both horsemen regiments because yeah. they're jammed up with each other. Yep, they're kind of jammed up on each other they and they're not nimble. So, you, yeah, you, you, you keep sure, them out of turn six. Flank charge. You got to hope yeah. for no turn seven. You got to hope for no yeah. turn seven. You got to hope that this this tree herder doesn't like roll completely off his ass and kill your guardian brutes. Yeah, but I guess it's got so actually the enslaved guardians. But I guess I he's got two units, assuming he can get this top unit around Mikhail. I don't think turn seven helps him, even if he's conservative with the good dragon. So I think he has to go for it. And then maybe try to drain life that left 
Abyssal Horseman unit that already has a wound on it with your Cursed High Priest and Soul Snare. Hope for a waiver. So then you're only getting charged by one Horseman unit. And Mikhail. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so I guess at this point he does actually have two surge sources left, right? He's got the Monolith and he's got that Cursed High Priest hiding behind the Soul Snare. Who can come yep. up and get into the game. Finally. Yep. Here he is trying to figure out where he can like, put the worm to protect himself. You could put that that rightmost enslaved guardian. I think you could get it in the flank of those impalers and do it on its own. Thirty-six on fours and twos. Pretty good chance. It was brutal. There you go. There's where you want him. Revenant King on a silver his... platter. Yeah. But he, if he doesn't take the charge and just sidesteps his middle horseman to the right and the tree herder, you know, it's, yeah, it's going to be tricky for Chris to salvage this. I'm getting restless. I want to dance to the outro music. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> or intro music. I missed the intro in the other game. <laughs> the sweet, sweet intro music. <laughs> That's okay. We'll we'll get to hear it here soon. I'm confident that we'll get to hear it here soon. I'm confident that this game is not going to be Alex's record for the longest game. That's right. Okay. They still have another half an hour. Before that happens, um, I want to give the audience as much, you know, content as possible. That's right. Yeah, so it's it's cool to see these games, you know, on these on these top tables at the end of a really long tournament, um, coming down to turn six, and they still are like it's not clear who's going to win. It's still down to a couple of maneuvers and some dice rolls. Either of these guys could potentially pull this thing out. Um, I think so, this has been a really fun tournament for a lot of close games like that. There's yeah. been a lot of very interesting things happen, weird dice rolls, um, impressive uh, plans that have actually worked out or good backup mm -hmm. plan. Yeah. Um, very strategic games have been played for the most part. <laughs> or at least the ones we streamed. There's been some strategic ones. I don't know what's going on on the other tables. I guess he's now checking to see if uh, he really needs to send the Rev King in there to block them up, to block both them up, or if there's really only one he needs to worry yeah. about. Or if he can send it into the Impalers to block. Yeah. Yeah. So much different stuff. So we're finishing up the streams tomorrow, but there is still a few call to arms games happening. Just no more top table games. I think the top tables are finishing up for this weekend. Um, yeah, we, we, we tried to get as many of them as we could. And um, so we scheduled the top eight um, yeah. and all of, and all the top eight were going to be this weekend. Uh, after That's that, we'll right. see next, next weekend, we, we might stream some of the uh, bug eater or Vanguard GT uh, top games. I'm not sure how we're going to do that yet because they're both kind of going on at the same time. Um, and the first couple rounds, like, might not, like, the, the games might not really be interesting enough because it's just, you know, the Swiss pairing 
or whatever, unless there's like a really interesting first round challenge that, that we want to see. Um, so we might just schedule a couple of like, you know, top table last last round last last two rounds kind of broadcasts. Last and, round on Sundays, kind of thing. Right, nice. and and see see who ends up playing. Um, see if anybody wants to run those streams. That might be really cool. Yeah, yeah especially like you know, end of the day again. Sunday would normally be when we'd be watching sports. So it's been a great filler for sports. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yep. It's been really great. So, it's been good. It's been amazing. I think we've ended up having quite a few different hosts, quite a few different commentators. It turned out to be a very big community involvement that I think we initially expected. Yeah, it's been great. I think some of the streams are like 200 viewers or views, mm -hmm. which is pretty good. Um, yeah. Some of them end up with more than that. Like, I think the the more popular matches have ended up with like maybe 400 viewers wow, by this point. Like the, you know, like the Dan King versus Jeff Trache, um, yeah. or, uh, or a Tom, Tom Robinson versus Patrick Dor Allen, uh, ex exhibition match we did. Oh yeah. That expedition match. That was cool. I loved how Patrick did all his models off his like American flags, Texas flags, Texas, Texas flags. flags. Sorry. Yes. Texas flags. Yes. Because I'm very good with my flags. Uh, same same oh, colors, oh, there same we go. basic shapes. So charge the dragon into the rear, back the enslaved guardians within three. Yep. Not bad. And then you can send your ref cab in potentially as well to throw some unit strength in. Yeah. Need and then the and then the dragons in the way. Mm -hmm. And your rev cab are out of the park. And only the tree herder can counterattack. Yep. Yep. Whereas if he put these cab up on the hill. <laughs> <laughs> Mike that, is very bitter solves... about the fact that the cab are not on the hill, okay? Yeah, it's... yeah. First question Mike's gonna ask in the post game. Why were they not on the hill? <laughs> why did you not put them on the hill? How dare why? you not put them on the hill? Why did you get yourself stuck in traffic? Oh, yeah, so I to send them in instead. And he sends the rev cab up. I think having the guardian brutes in the middle are probably better just because they can hit harder on the counter yeah. charge. Yeah, that's true. That's a good point. What's their the guardian dash 17? Same nerve and defense as the rev cab. Yeah, but so. they're crush two instead of thunder two, so it's a big difference on the on their counter punch. On the counter, yep. Yeah. And then you move the rev cab up to hold the rightmost token, yeah. like we expected him to. And maybe he can position them so it's a flank, and then not and just a that's a flank. Mitig mitigate risk. Was that too far of a pivot, though? Mm, I don't think so. I think. I don't know, maybe they're good. Up table. They're facing up table a little bit. A little bit, yes. It's, okay. it's probably a full 90. You won't be able to see the angle they were at. Like. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, it doesn't save. That doesn't, get, doesn't get saved. Yep. And then go ahead and charge Mikael for the hell of it. Be fine as well. No. No reason not to. Might as well do some wounds to him. Or, or not. Or not. No, I guess realizing maybe, maybe we're checking to see if, if he's, he's seeing if he could do a surge charge to avoid being hindered, I think. Oh, uh, yeah. That, that's clever. All right. So if all goes well, this, yeah, there we go. Let's bring in a proxy and see how the turning will work. All right. So you, so you started this turn. Basically, it was, it was zero to three. Now, here before combat, um, is it three to two, I guess? You've got, uh, let's see what's going on here in the middle. I don't think uh, the tree herder is close. close. Is that close enough? I don't think the tree herder is close enough, so I think he does have... The middle. And he will definitely, center. if he doesn't flub this roll. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So this could easily end up being a draw. Uh, maybe if the middle token ends up contested, I mean, right this second, it's it, yeah, it's it, it's gone from 
three to nothing uh, in favor of two. Thomas to three to two in favor of Chris. Um, yeah, it really depends on how the cat, like the horseman and tree herder, do on the counter charge. Yeah, and if he can, if he ends up killing Mikael, right, which is tall order, yeah. but not impossible. yeah, because if because if because if Mikael's still alive, then the dragon's pretty much toast. Because because the dragon will get charged by horsemen and Mikael, and then that probably gets out of the way of these horsemen to hit these guardians. Or even just Although, like the tree herder and Mikael into the into the guardians. Yeah. Um, we have a question from them. The the unit, the unit closes the gap. The the individual only pivots. Yeah. Yeah, we would, you just turn so that it's like flush and then they bring you yeah. closer. They the only again. movement the individual does is the pivot. Is the pivot, yeah. Okay. Interesting. So we'll be hindered. Potentially, right. that's they're playing the full border of the discoloration of the swan pond. Right. All right. I think that's probably all of his moves, unless he, well, he hasn't moved the Soul Snare or the uh, First Time Priest up. And if he wants them to drain life anything, he needs to move the Priest. But uh, he doesn't really have anything that he needs to surge. No. Yeah, the, the Cursed High Priest, yeah, has normal drain life, so it has to be within six. Yep. Which... Um, he should be able to do that. should be able to get within six yeah, of one is, of the horses. He is just 14 inches out, so eight inches... Plus yeah. six, he should be able to get to the horseman. And if you if you double up drain life on one of those horsemen, like they have fury, but they will waver from shooting. That's the thing. Drain life sixteen into one of them has a real chance. Yeah, and if you do it on the one towards the center, um, that make that that's going to make it very difficult for the other one to charge. I'll have to basically back it up and get out of the way. For but the one on the left has more wounds on has one more wound on it, so it slightly skews the math in your favor. Yeah. I guess it does back up four inches, which will, which it'll still be on the uh, objective when it does that. Yeah, so it's probably better to go for the one that's already got one wound. Because um, yeah. I also think there's nothing inspiring over there. That's correct. I don't think Mikhail, Mikhail is not very inspiring. He's just normal inspiring. Yeah, no, just normal inspiring. Yep. Yeah, so that makes that a that, that makes the one all the way on the left a good solid target for that. I would probably do that. It's like hitting on fours is swingy, but it you know if you get a good roll, you get like ten hits or not eleven hits. Or you could get five. Wounds. Yeah, if you get six or seven wounds, you're in the in waiver range. Yep. Oh, there he goes. Oh, no, he'll be... He's going to be hindered no matter what, I think. Yeah, unless he... With the he, surge charge. Yeah, he can he can just surge with the monolith, though. The monolith has literally nothing else to do, so he might as well just slide over. Yeah. So that... But the sli he'll slide back to center on Mikael. Yeah, Once it that's true. reforms to him, he's going to have to get it. It's tricky. He would have to, yeah, I think without Nimble, I'm not sure he can do So while we're filling time, Alex, what are you afraid of? <laughs> what am I afraid of? Do you have any irrational phobias you'd like to reveal to the broadcast? I'm audience? not. I'm not super comfortable with heights, but it's it's definitely a lot better now than it was when I was younger. <laughs> okay, mine's birds. I think they're very beautiful, but they're scary as fuck when they get close. <laughs> There's mine. What about you, Mike, or Michael? Oh, yeah. 
I don't know if I have any straight up phobias. Yeah, I think I also don't deal with heights well. Um, That's fair. I'm, I'm not My, into skydiving things like that. Yeah, like like legitimate phobias for me would be um, spiders. I um, we've got a we've got like an exotic pets place um, in town here that I used to like to go into every once in a while, but I would just stay away from where they kept all the all the spiders. They had like a, a rack with all of the spiders on it. And one time I went in there, I hadn't realized that they had rearranged everything until I was like <laughs> in there walking around for a while. And I turned around and just like two feet away from me was just a wall of spiders. And I like, that's the most that I've like legitimately froze. Like I just couldn't actually move for like a few seconds. And then I just got out of there. Nice. Hilarious. Actually, I, I like. I'm legit afraid of like my fear of birds is super irrational in the sense that I'm afraid of having a bird in my hair. Like I'm afraid of like <laughs> having something like land or get stuck in my hair or like be flapping with its little wings. But if it just sits over there and looks cute, that's just fine. But ugh. so I have a uh, irrational fear of haircuts. <laughs> as, as evidence um, because, and this was something that I did not know for years and my mother eventually told me um, uh, when I was a kid and my mom would tell me it was time to go get a haircut, I would like run and hide under the bed and be absolutely terrified uh, and, I, and I didn't know why. When I was like 16 or 17, my, my mom said, feel your ear right here. Like feel, feel the bottom of your ear and I'm like, why? I've, I've never done that before. She's like, just do it. And I feel and I'm like, she's like, do you feel that? And I'm like, yeah, there's like a weird little ridge on the bottom of my ear. Why is that? She's like, yeah, when you were a kid, I was giving you a haircut and I cut the bottom of your ear off. Um, <laughs> and that's why you're terrified of getting haircuts. And I was like, thanks, mom. That like mystery solved. <clears throat> well, quarantine led us to believe that I could cut Brinley's hair. So he may have a phobia of hairs, not because I cut him himself, but let's just say I don't think he's going to go outside for a while without uh a hat. <laughs> I'll send you some good YouTube videos. I ended up cutting my own hair last It month. looks really good. I think I actually tried to say, like, you know how Alex wears it with the push? You could do that, Brindley. You could see it. You could fix it like this. <laughs> I just went too short on the sides. That's fine. I, I think uh, there's a, a glut of YouTube videos of how to cut your own hair or cut your boyfriend's hair now. Since I feel the like they're probably 14. Is. Yeah. Yeah. One of my patients was like, I wish someone could just cut my hair around my ears. And I was like, after what I did to Brindley, I don't think you want me to touch your hair. <laughs> um, Got to get it just right. Yeah, I think, I'm, I think I'm pretty adamant at this point that after Call to Arms ends, I'm not going to stream any games that aren't on a clock anymore. I think that's going to be required from now on. Yeah. Even if it's a nice, generous, like, three-hour clock, like, I think that's still plenty of time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think three. That's fair. I think, like, it's fine when your UB game goes long, like, at home, but I think it is harder when it's a streamed game. Yeah. Well, if you're agreeing, like, I just play at the speed of that I play at, but yeah, if you're for streams, I can totally understand you want something a little more streamlined or a little more. We're not taking any shots at you personally, Alex. Oh, no, I don't care. Like, <laughs> like I play at speed. <laughs> I play at my speed. I, 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 but uh, I appreciate everyone who watched. But I, 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 on the top, last round on the top table, I wasn't going to rush myself. Sure, yeah. No, and that's different, too. Yeah, and for, and for a tournament where the TOs have not imposed any sort of time limit, like, sure, fine. Yeah, exactly. Well, there's an option. He can drain life Mikhail, then charge the person oh, and then, potentially then, then surge, clear him out. Yeah. That's not a bad option either. Yeah, I feel like I would still double up the drain life on, on one of the horsemen units to try to get rid of them or, yeah. or uh, waver them to leave them out it's, of the fight. It's unit strength, right? So it's like, you, you, yeah, it's a, it's a long shot, but if you can get rid of them, that's huge. Yeah. Yeah. He may have yeah. just realized that he couldn't quite get within six, maybe. I don't know. 
Because he did try moving the first high priest to the left, and it didn't quite get there. Yeah. Also, Justin Berg, if you're still watching, I swear we'll be done eventually, and we can play our game <laughs> today. Yeah. So good. Pardon me, like I'm not really sure what's changed in the board state in the last like 15 minutes. <laughs> yeah, not a whole lot. He he, uh, he was trying. I think he's been trying to figure out if he can charge Mikael without getting hindered, and now he's just realized that he can't. So he's pivoted for the surge, and now he's trying to position the cursed high priest to protect it from Mikael potentially. I think. Seems weird. I would try to, if he's going to surge into him, I would try to drain like that as well. Yeah. I like it. Especially because, like, the monolith just has absolutely nothing else to do except surge something this turn. Yeah. And it's like if he, and if Mikhail's charging the Cursed High Priest next turn, that's not a problem. I don't right. right. That's so, like fine for you. If you're, yeah. if the bottom of six, if that's what you're doing. Right. Uh, maybe he's no, he's oh, Mikhail's 14 and a half inches away. That's why he can't, but he should still he should be able to get within range of those horsemen. I'm not sure why. Yeah, I don't know because, like, even even putting the priest over here someplace, like, so long as you're not giving up an overrun in anything useful, mm -hmm. uh, I think if he had I just think. gone straight to the corner of that forest. He would have been able to get within six. Yeah. All right. So I was going to do the surge first. But I'm not sure what the cursed high priest is doing here, unless they've worked uh, out that when Mikhail pivots, he's going to be within six, but he's not. So, uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know why you moved the, the priest there. Then he doesn't have anything else to do. Doesn't have anything with any further rank. Unless there's something else he's trying to surge, but I don't know what that would be. There was the soul snare. Or did one wound with drain life? So I can forgive them not shooting at the horseman now. <laughs> yeah, right. And combat. All right. Woo! We did it. Move right along. Move right along. To combat. Two combat. I guess part of the finagling of that enslaved guardian could have been so that he could, if he doesn't kill Mikhail, he's still facing both horsemen in the front. Yeah. Ooh, that is so bad only three wounds. Two. Very bad roll. It's a very, very bad roll. Jeez, nine dice, and only two of them are over a three. Oh. And he didn't do any wounds. What? Oh, he's right, he's dash 16, so he's not going to bother rolling because he can't possibly do anything to him. Fair point. Oof. That hurts so much to spend like that much time working it out and then that, to have such a lackluster dice roll. That's your yeah. finish for it, yeah. That is that that happens to me a lot in person, I think. I like the longer I take thinking through something, the less the less likely it is for it to work. Five. Uh, this is what the dragon Seven. in the rear. Seven. Seven wounds. Pretty good. Eighteen in the front on fours. Eighteen eighteen hindered in the front. Nine average. Eight. Pretty good. That's fifteen. Snakes. Yep. Snakes yep. twice. Oh, Ooh, that first close. one, that three was close. All right. No so dice. That will, that will pick no them up. Dice. That will help cement him having that center objective, 
which will give them three points. It's going to be tricky to get there now for uh, Thomas to get there. Uh, yeah, because now actually both Guardians are within three of the center. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, the Dragon can turn around and yep. good luck breaking that on the, on the front, even yep. with both. Because the three man can't see. Yeah, it's going to be very difficult to try to execute a double charge against both of them. Chris, Chris might be proving us wrong. Um, yeah, yeah. So at this point, like the these these enslaved guardians will hold to that tree man, and mm -hmm. these two calf can't really do anything but. Try to hit the dragon, I guess, because if one of them, if the front one goes in against the, well, I guess the front one could charge all the way across and hit the brutes, and then this one could hit the dragon. Yeah, if Mikael and the horseman go into the brutes, that's not great odds, but it's possible. They have the boots, so they, they won't be hindered. Right. Um, but then you pretty much have to kill both of those units and slide over enough to, to bring... Yeah three units strength into the middle to turn this up. But, but at that point, you have if you walked too far away from uh, this objective, then you've kind of turned it into a draw or a loss. Yeah, if, if, plan, plan if that one wound horseman charges the Rev King and doesn't kill it, is it still within three of the left objective? I'm it, it probably will be in three. Oh, yeah, it's only six discs, yeah, so they'll be, they'll be yeah. within two inches, but still... Right, but they can't. Be hard they can't do that. Get and three of the middle, of the middle exactly. So he's gonna have trouble getting enough unit strength there to do it. Without a turn seven, it's gonna be very hard to get this. And then I don't know. Slave guardians and the guys are pretty good. Mm -hmm. They are, but that's uh, that's where he's gonna leave things. So we have arrived at last at the bottom of turn six. Woo! Woo! We did it. I feel bad for the other stream that was thought they were getting Alex like an hour ago. <laughs> Good things come to those who wait. <clears throat> so it looks like he might be trying to execute a double, double charge uh, on the dragon, which I'm not sure he'll be able to do that with Mikhail there. He might be boxing you out. Uh, mm -hmm. He might be just behind the plane or oh, just in front. We'll find out. Here in a second. Oh. Oh. oh, oh. Like a glove. Just clear. Wow. <laughs> What's going on? Or not? <laughs> well, I guess if that's the. You no, know, you can't slide over because that's a unit and not a piece of terrain. So you can't overslide the first unit to, to leave space. I don't he think. Right. Yeah. Oh yeah, you have to do the first. He would have to to do that. He would have to do the first, the the one behind first. Yeah. And they can't do that because they're they're blocked. By these guys. Yeah. It didn't yeah. look like he was touching them. So. Mm -mm. <laughs> I think it worked. Do the thing. Move <laughs> on with our lives. I mean, he could also Not just spin spin Mikhail around and use him to. Help get rid of the dragon if he's worried about one of them not popping the dragon. But yeah, true fact. Yeah, him in the, the flank of the dragon would be good. But uh, still, so much unit strength there in the middle now. Now that now, now that both the brutes are, excuse me, both the guardians. I keep wanting to call them guardian brutes. They're enslaved guardians. Now that both of them are within three. Hmm. Well, yes, if you land on top of it. Yeah, if you can go through your units, it's all easier. That's great. That's awesome. I guess Mikael could also run through the pond and hit these enslaved guardians with the uh, tree herder. That's not a bad choice at all. Yeah. I kind of like that. I was thinking. You've also got a uh, Drain Life 9 to throw into that, too. Yeah. Yeah. You try and break that one, and then if you break the dragon, I think you've got the middle then, right? So... Yeah, Tree Herder with Mikhail, Drain Life, and Dread. I 
and then you can run one of those guardian out of the horsemen into the guardians and then drain like the first high priest try to take both yeah. and save guardians out in one turn it's a lot it's a lot and if the game ends like he's got to either be at least contesting if not hold well if he moves off of that that objective by the hill then he's got to get the middle or uh it's a lost game i think he has to leave one horseman behind charge one into the guardian or the slave guardians at the top charge mikhail and treatment into the bottom one add some drain life support but is it also like they could couldn't the horsemen that are on the objective right now like the bottom ones next to the dragon boy could they not yeah. charge the dragon boy and still be within three of the other one it, it looks uh, like they'd still be within three of that but they wouldn't be with three of the middle one and then they're not getting rid of the enslaved guardians at the top yep. that are within three of them no right, but i mean can we, within three of one there he goes he okay. could he could charge these horsemen into the brutes and this one into the dragon and their back corner would probably still be within three that's there we yeah. go that sounds like i feel like you could charge both and still keep one in within as long yeah. as you don't do a combo charge on them you can make it work yeah I don't know that you necessarily get those units alone. Yeah, but then like, do you get the game if you don't do it that way? Yeah, I mean I think you I think you're better off just putting both into the dragon. Yeah. Now that now that Mikael's out of the way. You're extremely yeah. low odds to kill everything and win this turn. But yeah. if you just take out one of those enslaved guardian hordes and the dragon, it's extremely high odds to win in a seven. And if nothing else, you get a lot more points yeah, yes. for attrition. Yeah, just advance one of them. It should be within three. Yeah. Yeah, the soul snare should be able to get the enslaved guardians that are at the bottom. And I think those kindred archers are only unit strength two, so they can't actually contest right. that objective away. No. Yeah, I don't. I don't really like the flank charge there. Yeah. It doesn't do anything but give the know. archers to the to the cavalry. On a turn seven, yeah. I'm just hoping for some lucky rolls there. That's all I'm you're sure doing it's... for. I mean, at the end, remember, like you, because of it, Northern King's scoring by if your opponent kills them, it, it just gives them more points. It doesn't take anything from it you. It doesn't hurt yours. It doesn't hurt you, really. Yeah. It just gives. But you if you're lucky enough to break to them, unlucky dice yeah. or whatever it is, you gain more bonus points, and you're gonna get um, you pick up that objective, which could win you the game. Mm -hmm. So the so the trick here, yeah. The problem here is that after this combat, this lower abyssal horseman unit needs to stay within three of that token, and the upper one can't walk forward close enough to get within three of the central token before they hit the guardian, the, the enslaved guardians. Mm -hmm. So it's the lower. That's a tricky one, right? Can the top one back up to within three? I don't. If they back up straight, are they within no, three inches? No, they'll miss it. No, you, uh, I think you're still just playing for a seven. I think the the bottom one just sidesteps down, which keeps yeah. everyone at three of that token, and then the top one would have the flexibility <laughs> to turn to face that enslaved guardian horde. And then you just say, okay, we'll see if we get a turn seven, then then they can readjust and do other things. Yeah, I still think this is the best path to victory, yeah. if you're Thomas or you know. Well, it's it's not because this there's nothing on this in, enslaved guardian right now, and it is within three of the token. So if these enslaved guardians still die, that's still just one unit strength. Mm, that's true. Well, so would I mean, you charge one into more. each? Would you go one into the dragon and one into the... Oh, wind blast. That's Everybody. the way you would have to do it to win. Uh, or uh, wind blast. Or wind blast of away three. Yep, that'll do it. Okay, <laughs> never mind. That army standard bear with wind blast. Greg, 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 about that guy. Greg, Person is, Greg Person is somewhere yelling wind blast at me right now. I can feel it. <laughs> It's a very, for this scenario, it's very, very powerful. Yeah. Jesus, wind blast for the wind. Nine. I didn't think about that. And then drain life, and then so long as the tree herder and uh, Mikael it's... deliver. Oh, four wounds. That's huge. That is really big. Four from that the drain really life? Big. Four from drain yeah. life. Wow. That's Woo. a really good conversion. Yeah. And then are those horsemen within 18? They are. Are they chrome? They are chrome bound, so they should yep. be able to get that heal back. And then regen does not get the last one. 
Yeah, All right. The heel. Didn't, didn't I had completely sense. forgotten about the Zephyr Crown. So now if this game ends on turn six, uh, if that dragon and yeah. those uh, those guys die, then that'll yes. be three to two. That's huge. In favor of Thomas. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it still comes down to killing these units. So there's... Yeah, yeah. kill, yeah. kill, kill uh, these units in no dash, time. Still a dash 19 unit. This is inspiring. Yeah. yeah. Dash 18 round, right? Or are they based dash 20? Oh, for dread. 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 Yeah, dash 18. Uh, so that's 16 wounds on the dragon, I think. Oh, I would have liked him to do the other combat first. Well, that gets rid of the inspiring, though. And, oh. Yeah, yeah, I guess no, the, the right. inspiring is important. Yep. But now, like, the position... And you also have good. room now for your one to run forward, and one can stay and, back on the objective, and, yeah, because yeah, the other can wind blast it out of the space. Well, the top one that has one damage on it, is it within three of the token? Yeah, he's got to turn this one, so it's not going to be within three of anything. Yeah. So now he has to kill the buck. No, don't. Don't go forward. What are you doing? Don't go forward. No, 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 no. He, he would need to get within three of the center. That's more bonus points, I guess. Just to con but still, It is, but he's got to roll a two. If he rolls a one, he ends up in between the two and gets neither. Neither. Yeah, I wouldn't. Exactly. I feel like that's a pretty big gamble. Yeah, this is why I, I, I really want it. I feel like you do that other combat first, because then you first. just know you just know if the tree herder can hold that by himself or not. Yep. Yeah. It's... Getting rid of the inspiring is nice, but it's more important to just know what this center combat is going to turn out like. Mm -hmm. To know whether yeah. or not you need to go forward or not. Yeah. Yep. I feel like take the guaranteed objective. Yeah. It's hard to say stay. because if if he fails to kill it yeah, and he gets this right. overrun, then like. Then he needs the overrun to to take it for the objective tie. That's true. Mm -hmm. It's rough. Yeah, it's a tough call. And now we will take a fifteen-minute intermission while they think about it. Well, well he, well, yeah, well, while well, he decides starts. if he wants to roll a, try to roll a more than one. Well, technically, he needs to roll more than a two because on a d6. So, four damage on those enslaved guardians. They're, what, a 17? So, with the dread, they're effectively a dash 12. Yeah. Can Mikael and the tree herder kill a dash 12? I think they, they should be able to. I feel like they should. Even even hindered Mikael should contribute a couple wounds, and the tree herder should be pretty solid. Yeah, tree I also herder. feel like I would probably roll that risky flank, too, the one that's like, would be hot dice. For it to uh, happen, that would be insanely hot dice. Twenty. But if you insanely hot dice win it, then you don't have to worry about it as much in the middle either. I don't think that even on a like extremely hot roll, they hit enough times to even take a nerve check on those revenant cavalry. What is it? What's their nerve? Dash seventeen. Dash, dash seventeen. Yeah. And it's twenty dice on sixes and fives. You yes. had to do at so least you're... five wounds. Yeah, and then roll a twelve. And then yeah. roll a twelve. Yeah, yeah. never mind. Yeah. Scratch like my thoughts. Times. So here's 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 Thomas thinking really hard about whether he wants to. Yep, stay and go for the win. There you go. Yep, they're gonna stay. Yeah, yep. good. I think that's. Yeah, I think it's a huge gamble. Otherwise. This is just it's just an important Six, like reminder that you really need to consider which five, of your fights to do in what order. Yeah, yeah. I think also a lot of us are in that mindset of doing the inspiring oh. first, so it's not necessarily always the right call in case only, you need only two hits, but only one wound from uh, Mikhail. That puts okay. him at ten. Oh, oh yeah, he's hindered. So. Attacks for the tree herder. Oh, seven. Now you rolled nine. Didn't he? Oh, no, nope, didn't kill it. And that was a three, needing a six. Mm -hmm. So that's huge, because that means he still holds that middle token, and he still yeah. has three points. So yeah. now on a turn seven, it'll flip around. But on a, if it ends on turn six, then uh, 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 yeah. Chris pulls it out. If you, if you knew that this combat had gone like that, you, then you overrun the you horse and you just get yep. the win. Yeah. Yep. And then you yeah. Turning point. Comes down Did they not roll? Seven roll? Oh, yeah. Uh oh. 
turn seven. Four plus. <laughs> yes, we know what turn seven is. Oh. And we have a turn seven. And we are over four hours. And we're over four hours, so this game will certainly set a record for the longest at this point. Ooh. I'm gonna need a nap after this. I have to <laughs> play a Yubi game for myself after this. I have to play a Yubi game for the tournament after this. Ugh. No, I mean, like, I I'm playing it. in the Digital Throne. My Digital Throne game was supposed to be at three, and oh. I had to message my opponent being like, sorry, bud. All right, so top of turn seven. I'm so hungry. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah. So much for having lunch and dinner today. Just dinner. <laughs> it's time for a nice dunch, right? <laughs> Don't call it a dunch. <laughs> or is it a liner? Or a lupper? Either. Lupper. Mm, one, two, three. I scoring units, I think. Okay. I'm getting a snag. Otherwise, I'm going to be cranked. All right. And there's a side we step. Hoping for a... back, probably get that surgeon to flank. Yep. Which will put him back in. Easily put him back in three. He's back in three with just a side step. Um, well, I don't know. What, I, I, I guess maybe. Does that does that give him the flank? Is he in the flank now? Of the, of the horse? Like yeah. Really close. Yeah, I think so. Insert surgeon. Yeah, it looks like it's just blank. enough. But... Oh, but he's in three anyway. He can't. He can't be there though, because he's within an inch of the horseman. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, he's gonna. But did he start within an inch? I don't yeah, think so. Like because they he's... messed this up. Because wait, that was no, no, because he slid them. And then the horseman pivoted after fighting the worm, which put them within an inch. So now if these enslaved guardians move, they have to end up outside of an inch of... Farther away. Yeah. Right. So they can't or charge. Just, yeah. yeah, they have to they charge. Yeah, they can't way. slide straight. I wonder if that aspect of it was intentional, because if it was, that's a fantastic play. Yeah. I don't that's know. That's a good way to prevent a, a search flank. Yeah, make it so they can't. Can't just sidestep into your flank because mm -hmm. even right now they're they're touching this this swamp terrain or whatever this is back here. So even if they do a front charge, it'll still be hindered. Yeah, they're not going to break those horses. Well, they'd have the, the three drain life will be um, on top of it as well. And so cursed high priest. Yeah, yeah you would need but to double up the drain 16. life. Jeez, yeah, sixteen drain life coming in. But yeah, even then, like four damage. Once you're once you're in the front there. Mm -hmm. You don't really have a path to get on an objective after you wipe out the cab, even if you win. Yeah, yeah. So they are pretty much out of the game, aside from maybe killing those horsemen. Yeah. And then Mikhail, the tree herder, should do the job on the second try. They should. Um, and the guardians up top move sideways towards the center. They That's a question for us. I'll tell them we don't think so. You end. Because mm -mm, it'll pass within an inch. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, you hope that. You hope that Mikhail and the tree herder can finish it off on their own so that you don't have to send yeah. the other unit of horsemen in and step off your objective. Well, but I guess if the uh, guardians and the drain life don't kill the currently wounded horsemen, they could just back up onto the token right. the, on the bottom of seven. So, yeah, yes. so the horsemen yeah. go in those, those injured ones just back up. Yeah, yeah if they mm -hmm. survive, then it's that's pretty much game because he doesn't have to kill the guardian, uh, the same right. guardians. Then. Unless the horsemen get wavered because Fury doesn't let you do whatever you want. It only lets you counter charge. Well, if they're no, wavered, well, they can try and back up. Yeah, that's true. If they're wavered, they can still disengage and back up. Yeah, so you got to kill them. Yeah, they have to die. Oh, that's nifty. Um, well, I guess I don't know if this is better, but it looks like he pivoted out of the woods so that he can then surge into the face and not be injured. But like that, yeah. Yeah. when you're giving up the seven drain life, so I'm not really sure which is better. 
you can oh, search you the monolith. 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 Yeah, yeah, but like he, one of them is not drain lifing. One of them is going to have to surge instead no. in this play. So is that better than just double drain life and no, end charge? The monolith will surge. Yeah. The monolith will surge. The soul snare can spell, and then this cursed high priest can. They can both still drain life. Oh, the monolith. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jeez, yeah. I forget that thing just does whatever it wants. Right. Yeah. Yeah, because there's there's as there's as nothing else for it to do. Visits. Right. Everything else is already in combat. Anywhere on the board. Yeah. It's just this weird terrain piece that floats around doing things <laughs> wherever it wants. Um, but, like, even if you kill those horsemen, you still, like, you don't walk forward to within three inches of either objective, no, so it doesn't. Yeah, it's You're just, just killing it so it can't claim an objective, like, next. Like, on the right. Of the turn. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, you oh, yeah. you really want to get over here so you can drain life something and heal these guys so that maybe they live the turn. Yeah. Oh, can you get uh, yeah, I, don't, I don't know if those guys have a prayer even with the drain life. I don't know, but that's well, that's kind of every, the every wound will count, right? Every wound will count, and that's the one that matters because if because if they die, then he has the middle, and that's three points. And he should be charging the tree herder since it has unit strength, and that will make Mikhail hindered again. So. Yeah. Whereas the tree herder is never going to be hindered, which it looks like he just yeah. did. Because he just centered up on the tree herder. I mean, they're not going to kill the tree herder. But they got drain life one, and then whatever. I'm uh, sorry, life leech one, and then whatever drain life points they can get. So. Yeah. Oh, did he just slide out of six, though? Oh, no, he didn't. <laughs> no. Yeah, he's still good there. All right. It's kind of a long shot. Turn seven, Hail Mary. And if he doesn't kill those already wounded horsemen, then even then it won't matter because they can back up. The other horsemen can charge in and definitely kill mm -hmm. those brutes. Brutes. Sorry, guardians. Yeah. No, I think they're just brutes now. I've just accepted that that's what they're called. They're just they're just guardian brutes now. That's it. Yep. It's been four hours and fifty minutes of my life. I get to call whatever I want. <laughs> I think people should stop trying to purposely break the longest game record. That better not be. <laughs> well, at least we can tell Britain that it wasn't him this time. I know the chats that we're already talking about that in one of the chats. Yeah. I feel like this is just karma for me. <laughs> <laughs> There's four successes on the surge. That is plenty. To send the, uh, the guardians, the enslaved guardians into the front of the horsemen. Mm -hmm. And now we'll be looking for some big, big, big drain lives. Mm -hmm. oh. <laughs> Oops. Just dropping a building on them. Right. Pretty sure there's no Comet Strike spell in this game, but yeah, be awesome. All right. Five, Five hits. hits. Big. Oh, six hits. That is really big. Stuff. Just Four, three. Or three. Three's, three's not bad. No. Nope. Three more than they had. Three more yeah. than they had. Takes three off of the uh, the guardians. And it's the soul snare with an eighteen. It is. We can. We can. Yep. Yeah, so if the soul snare does the same, that's uh, it's gonna be a pretty that's good outcome. Yeah, pretty good outcome for Chris. Not sure what he's waiting for. Um, does the do you need line of sight to heal? No. With drain life, he just got just just within the area. You yeah, need line of sight to cast it on the target, but not line of sight for the healing effect. That's what I thought. Five and there's again. good. Oh, uh, but only one wound. Drag. And it still puts it up to five, yeah. and they are a it's I think doable. fourteen sixteen unit. So it's unhindered now, so that's what, 12, eight wounds maybe? 13? That's do that's pretty doable. <clears throat> yeah, it is. 
All right, on to combat. Revcav beating up on archers. Nine hits, a little better than average. Looking for Six. fours, six wounds. Good. Probably what a 14, 16 unit. To... Yeah, looking for eight to waver. Eight to waver, nothing inspires anywhere nearby. Probably checking the inspiring ranges. Yep. Just a five. They're, they're okay. Uh, but they get the life leech back one. And now they're in the front of the rev cab, so they're certainly not going to do much to it on the yeah. bottom of seven. It's going to be the same odds as the, the hindered flank. Yeah. All right. Now the tree critters. 15 hits. That's pretty good. 10, ten wounds with Brutal. Are they crushing two? Yeah. 10 wounds with Brutal? That's not bad. That's great. Dash 18, I think. Yep, seven twice. Oh, oh. Ten and an eight. Oh, oh. got it. I think he just killed a tree. Well, that's pretty big. That's, a tree wow. that's huge. So huge. now so now these horsemen have to live. Or yeah. this game will have just slipped away in turn seven. Slide up. Yeah. Well, you can still get the tie if he just brings those ones that are on the tokens in to kill the injured and slave guardians. Yeah. Then it's a tie, yeah. Yeah, then it's a tie, but... Yeah. yeah. The only chance he has at a win is if these horsemen hold. Yeah. And they're starting out with five wounds on him. Sideways towards the top? Sure. Um, yeah, I mean, at this point, you just don't want to put yourself someplace where you can be wind-blasted away from it. <laughs> that would be pretty funny. That would be pretty funny. And now he's kind of centered on it, so that's probably a good way. Good place to be. Now it'll be very hard to wind blast him so far. He's outside of three. And it's like nine hits and eight wounds on the horseman. That will put him at 13. Just need a three twice or once. No, twice for McNeil. Yeah. Yeah. An 11 and a 9. We'll pick them up. That'll do it. Who cares how much damage you do when you roll, like, 9 for nerve? Right. So that's a pretty big swing. Yeah, sure. Forward, why not? And Can't really get within. Can't really get within 3, right? No. Can't really get within 3, but... Made it very, very difficult for Thomas. Yes, yeah, so now, yeah, it's a tie. Yeah, he's only got one option. It's just that try to pick up those enslaved guardians and yeah. then call it a yeah. tie and call it a draw. Yeah, mm -hmm. so if he hasn't used that, those uh boots yet, now is the time. And I'm not sure but that he ever McKay, did. Can Mikael charge the rev cat? No, everything's yeah. right there. Yeah, yeah, see, all oh, right, same height. And Mikael is not, he's not within 16 of the monolith, right? Oh, Mike left. We don't know. He's I don't, over I don't 18. Think so. I, think, I think, yeah, that, that's an 18 from the circle, and that's kind of just sliding it straight over. Yeah, so there's not much to do other than just take out this um, Slave Guardian Horde. I kind of think for points, maybe Mikael goes and tries to kill that Curse High Priest, and then you send in the, mm -hmm. the Cav plus Drain Life on these Enslaved Guardians, but. I think they're just trying to look for the extra attacks for the. You this know, will the, matter for tournament points because it's worth two for tournament points. Yeah, it was, it was the same for like attrition. Yeah, yeah. J boots. Oh. <laughs> <sighs> Okay, so do the things, roll the dice, get yeah, shooting. No afternoon naps. I was curious if he was going to do this or not. He was taking the riskier play. 
Oh, the rev cap. Is he's doing which? Guardians, putting the drain life onto the rev cap instead of on the enslaved guardians. I guess, there I guess he's going for the roll YOLO win. Like, if somehow. Yeah, he needs, like. No, yeah, that's not what he needs. One. Yeah, that's not going to do it. But, yeah, with six wounds already on the enslaved guardians, the Abyssal of Horsemen should be able to pick them up. Yeah, unhindered. Mm -hmm. yeah. Threes and threes, and then the dread for Mikhail. Thirteen. Yeah, they're already at snakes. Yeah. Don't really need Mikhail. Two more. Oh, Oof. Close. Is that three and four? <laughs> Man. As close 30. as he could. Yeah. All right. And the uh, archers. No, oh, Mikhail's gonna go forward. Why? Why? The game's over. It's bottom of seven. Yeah. Uh, I mean, he used to put dread on that last combat. If the archers. Yeah. He, he, oh, he, that makes sense. Oh yeah. Good yeah, point. Got... Okay, so it's gonna be like, why are you like? It's still. Yeah, like, he would have used a couple. <laughs> not kidding. These are only nine inches away. So. He needed like five from the drain life to have a shot at killing these guys. Yeah. Five, four hits. Four hits. Uh, that's not bad. Oh, no, no. <laughs> no, no, Arch. All right. Yes. All right. That is a draw. That's a draw. Uh, that's a pretty epic draw. Okay. I will uh, bow out now before the yeah. recap so I can join in the other. Yeah. There's there's still the other cast going. They're not the done tail, yet. The tail end of the other cast. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, guys. All right. Bye, Alex. I'm just sending them the studio link. All right. I don't even remember what happened at the beginning for what questions to ask. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Mike just wants to know why you didn't stay on the hill. But like... <laughs> right, right. An hour ago, why didn't you stay on the hill? An hour ago, if they can remember. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know that we have a whole lot of questions for him at this point. I mean, it was a pretty tight game, I feel like. It was a pretty mm -hmm. cautious game, and uh, oh, here we go. There's Chris. We're just waiting Hello, on uh, Thomas to come back. Hello. Sorry about the endurance trial. <laughs> you guys have officially taken longest game. Oh, wow. You beat out Alex, Chris, and um, Ryan Mus Munsell. Yep. Uh, hi, guys. Uh, so thanks hi. for uh, letting us watch that. That was awesome. Uh, it was very epic. It was super tense and close all the way up to the end. Uh, it was hard to tell who was going to win. Um, Ashley, did we have any questions for them? Not really. I don't think there was really much. I think it was a pretty clean game, and there wasn't a lot of uh, things where we disagreed or where we had were wondering what they were thinking, really, or that I can remember. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, there were there – were, couple of things like i think in the very first turn we, we were a little curious about what was going on with the gargoyles when they turned face in the middle of the table when we felt like trying to throw them across the table would have been uh, a better move but then i think after like the next turn after that i think that's what happened is the gargoyles turned and tried to get across the table um yes yeah, so i don't know do you guys have any uh, uh michael do we have any other questions for them that you can remember um no, no, nothing, in, nothing in particular that I can think of that I kind of questioned throughout the game. I don't, I don't know. What, was there any thought maybe to waiting another turn? Speaking about where the gargoyles were, waiting another turn to break the token that the archers were sitting on. Yeah, I guess I did that a bit prematurely. I was afraid to get uh, the revenant cab in the flank of the archers, mm -hmm. but I guess I could have just moved them out of the forest and back up. Archers as well, uh, but that wound, one wound they did on the remnant cab troop was telling. So, right, yeah, yeah. yeah. But uh, I might have been better off just leaving the token there. I'm not sure. I feel like it was kind of a kind of a toss-up play, just because um, it's a little bit riskier. But had you kept the token, it it kind of makes it more of a. Um, 
more of a decision for Chris as to whether or not to turn around and address the gargoyles that have flown over or to push forward for that token. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I should have considered uh, he having to make that choice. So, yeah, I was thinking of that throughout the game that uh, that was maybe my biggest mistake. Maybe another one was uh, not turning the trigger on the hill in my turn one. So just sitting there. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, was, we also uh, thought, uh, Chris, on turn one when you flew the Revenant King on the worm all the way up kind of parallel with the building, um, it gave uh, Thomas like kind of enough space to hide both of his cavalry units out of his uh, arc of sight. And we were like, ah, if only he was turned a little bit. And then it seemed like the next turn you moved him back and turned him a little bit more. Um, is that something you, you noticed after the fact and were like, ah, oh, I should have done this a little different or... Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm still relatively new to this, so I'm still learning. And uh, that's definitely something that I, I will fix in the future. Okay. Cool. Uh, well, unless, uh, unless anybody has anything else for the moment. No, I'm just glad you survived through this lengthy game. Yeah, no, no we're fine. Um, uh, yeah, no, that was, that, that was awesome. I, I mean, it's always fun to watch a game that is close up to the end where we're still looking at it going, okay, well, at, at the end of everyone's turn, it's like, okay, well, he's in an okay position, but not a great position. So the other guy still has room to work and he can still pull this out. We're still not sure yeah. how it's going to end up. So like it, you know, it went all the way to the bottom of, of turn seven where it still could kind of go either way. Like it could be a win. It could be a draw. It could be a win the other direction. Like, so yeah, it was, it was a cool close game to watch. So uh, thanks for letting us uh, watch that. Um, yeah, I feel like it was fitting that it was a draw, considering yeah, how tight draw. it was. Epic, epic yeah, draw. I agree. Yeah. Uh, so I'd like to thank uh, Thomas and Chris for letting us watch their game, and I'd like to thank uh, Michael Piercy, Ashley Moat, and um, Alex Coos for commentating on the game. Uh, currently happening, also on Dash 28 Live, is the uh, Ray Shields and Ben Johnson uh, match to determine which of them is the top Trident Realm player. Uh, and then a little later on this evening at 8.30, I think I still need to schedule that broadcast. Uh, I'm scheduled to play against uh, Andrew Goodman from uh, Australia for the Table 5 match, the last round of Call to Arms. And then, of course, tomorrow we have a top table match between Tommy Robinson and uh, Mark Campbell at 1 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. British Standard Time. So, uh, till next time, uh, I'm Mike Atkins. Thanks again, everyone. And uh, we'll see you next time on Dash 28 Live. Awesome. Thank you much. Thank you. Take care.